Uh, uh, hey, what's going on? Let me just finish this thing up real quick, and we're going to get to this. <laughs> I, uh, this thing always pops up every time I start. I knew this damn thing shouldn't have, <clears throat> shouldn't have started this thing. Give me one second. We're going to get into this because I got to utilize the phone, but I got to finish this thing up real quick first. Because we're going to get into this Umar, I mean, Tariq Nashi. See, I'm so used to people doing the Umar Johnson. We're going to get into this Tariq Nashi behind the con in just about one second. So this is what we got to do. Let me just finish this up real quick as we welcome everybody into the place. Got to finish this up, you know, when the sound goes off because I got to find something on the phone. <laughs> this is why you never start cooking or doing something before you're about to do something. <laughs> Hold on one second. And um, as we get through this, this should be thorough. And I would also like to thank a few people who actually helped me put these materials together. Uh, because obviously they want to see this man brought down because there are a lot of people who concentrate on Umar Johnson. You know, I agree with getting rid of cons and stopping the con game, but we got to tackle these other con men because these other guys are a little more sophisticated. What's going on, Nat Turner? Thank you for your uh, help. And uh, also... Mr. Petty, what's going on, Trey? <clears throat> and um, okay, good. We're finally done with that. Plus, once I finish this thing, I should I shouldn't even touch this thing. <laughs> okay, now here we go. Because we're gonna get in. We're going in today. Uh, Mr. So-called Tariq Nashi. And also, before we begin, I would also like to thank once again. V for the donation, and that's Vanessa, the right V, not the other V that said they, they were going to do it and they didn't do it. <laughs> and I also like to thank Mike for his donation as well. Now, this Umar Johnson, I'm, I'm sorry, see, I see they got my mind on Tariq, Tariq uh, Umar Johnson, all these uh, Umar Johnson videos. <laughs> Nobody has done this, Tariq Nashi. So, well, people have done it in the past, but they haven't gone in like this. So I'm going to do it like this. And before I even begin, yeah, what's up, E-Duck, everybody? Before I even begin, let me also say that the contents used, uh, these are public records. These are, it's nothing slanderous. It's nothing... Uh, made up. Uh, this is all everything that's on the record, all his words, all his actions, all his doings. Uh, let's see. So is it true that Tariq Nasheed is making a Hidden Colors of America? Shit. He has to start with himself, man. <laughs> But of course, as we always do when we talk about Tariq Nashi, we like to expose his hidden colors because that's the one hidden colors he doesn't like to bring out. And while a lot of people talk about it, not enough people talk about it to get it out there, but more and more people are bringing it out, which is a good thing. Because we're going to bring it out tonight, tonight, that's for sure. So there are a few things we could begin with. Uh, because I took notes when he had the video when he was so-called talking about a Mexican guy. And the one thing I took note of that he started co-opting the Aboriginal. Uh, I, I wouldn't even call it a movement, but a state of being. That's what I'll call it. But he started co-opting that just like he did with the, uh, the Eidos. You know, that's a problem. The Eidos thing, he, that's an afterthought for him. 
that's not anything that he's committed to. He doesn't feel on that, and as well as the Aboriginal, because when he co-opted the Eidos and took it over with his trademark foundational Black American, fake-ass word, uh, Mr. Nasheed, everything he does is money-motivated. Uh, and if you notice, you can't find Mr. Nasheed's products in stores because that's not who he markets his products to. His products are for short-term profit by a pretty good margin and to avoid taxes whenever possible. How do we know this? Because they're not stores, that's why. <laughs> I mean, you can sell anything over the internet, but you can't sell anything in the store unless you own the store. Then you can get away with not without having a barcode or something like that or paying taxes on it if you slip. He only makes limited quantities of these Chinese products, which he then sells to his audiences. And we're gonna go over some of that in a minute. Uh, because this guy has always come up with a new product to sell over the dumbest shit possible. <laughs> which is funny to me. He's currently making the buck broken. You know, it's the funny part is he makes these uh, videos, documentaries. He's always talking about, oh, we're out in D.C. filming a, a new film. He makes low-budget, low-down, public-access-style documentaries. <laughs> and as I made mention in the past, the man can't even put the shit on Blu-ray. We're already on 4K Blu-ray. And the man can't even put it on 1080p Blu-ray. He's still stuck on DVD. Why? Because DVDs are cheap to make. That's why. Blu-ray, at the minimum, is where it's at. And I don't give a damn what the uh, uh, sales figures say about Blu-ray and DVD sales. It's just that people were used to DVD. A lot of people with HD TVs don't even realize, but well, they should realize Blu-ray is around. I don't, I don't like to buy a movie on anything less than Blu-ray. Speaking of that, uh, <laughs> DC Cab is coming out. On, what's going on, Vanessa? Uh, DC Cab is coming out on Blu-ray, finally. I'm like, damn, I thought that was a long forgotten film. Because I was just getting into that uh, on the uh, Amazon Prime. Aaron loves Angela. And Thomasina and Bushrod, that was Gordon Parks Jr.'s movies. Those are extremely hard to find everywhere possible, high and low. And, um, you know, I got Amazon Prime again. I was surprised to find those movies on Amazon Prime, but they're not on Blu-ray, though. And before tonight, I got on tonight, I was watching this movie called Forbidden Planet. Because I had seen a scene from it on TV when I was scanning some channels. I said, damn, this shit is old, but this shit looks kind of sophisticated, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I said, let me find out what the hell this shit is called. So I found out that movie comes from 1956. I'm like, God damn. I got to turn this air conditioner. Hold on one second. <laughs> Shit was getting hot. Uh, yeah, so this Forbidden Planet, this came from 1956. I was like, damn, the sets look strong. The effects look very good. I'm like, because it changed my perception of the 50s. That's the 1956. I said, that looked modern. And it wasn't half bad, though. So, you know, I guess they did have some entertainment in the 50s that looked fairly sophisticated. Anyway, back to this Tariq Nasheed. I got into the movies because we're talking about his crappy films that he calls films. He claims that he records his material, <laughs> as he wants to call it, on the highest quality cameras. That's what he claims. But if that's the case, then how come we don't have a Blu-ray release <laughs> on his films? Nobody's gonna invest a lot of money recording something <clears throat> on the finest quality cameras and not even put it out in HD and we're on to 4K, doesn't make any sense. So this man is co-opting 
and don't worry, I'm getting to the visual audio and visual evidence in, in a minute, but we got to set it up. You know how we got to do it. So he's trying to co-opt the Aboriginal state of being. Before, Mr. Nasheed wanted to co-opt yeah, Gordon Parks Jr. Sorry, I had to get into that again. Yeah, see, that's the thing. Yeah, he died in a plane crash. I didn't know that. And I used to get the two confused. I was thinking that it was the same guy who did the shaft and the superfly, but apparently that was his son. And he made, I noticed in the Angela Loves Aaron, he made a little cameo in there playing a drug addict junkie again, just like he did in uh, at the beginning of Superfly. If people didn't know, that was him at the beginning of Superfly uh, doing all the talking, the light-skinned guy. So I didn't see him in Thomasina and Bushrod. I hadn't noticed his uh, cameo in there if he did. Um, but see, they said he was filming a, a movie before he, he crashed. I don't know if they got any scenes, but I guess after all these years, if they didn't show anything, I guess uh, it didn't come out. But in a way, see, his father made uh, Shaft. He made the Superfly. In a way, and, and, yeah, three the hard way, too. Four movies, but they're powerful. Powerful, uh, hardcore, obviously, without the exception of uh, Thomasina and Bushrod. Their hardcore um, urban stuff at, I, I guess, at the realest way that you can view them for that time period. Hell, even up to today. I don't see any movies with people storing coke throughout the movie <laughs> these days. Like, I guess Scarface was the last one, right? <laughs> so that was hardcore. But anyway, <clears throat> Mr. Tariq Nashi, what he's doing now is he's trying to co opt the Aboriginal state of being, just like he did the Adels. See, you know, he wasn't involved, didn't care about the Adels, but what he did was what Yvette Carnell, Tone Talks, and you know I was into that first, or be at least before they were. <clears throat> I didn't call it Adels, so I'm not even gonna, gonna claim the name. Because uh, I still don't subscribe to the out of Africa theory for us, because the evidence is not there. But he took over that, befriended them. Then he came up with a beef. You know, the beef is the usual thing to call separation, whether it was planned or not. More likely than not, it was planned. Then he says, uh, the hell with that. I don't agree with them. I'm forming my own. I got an idea. I'll call it foundational Black American. Yeah, that's right. Foundational Black American. He acts like he made the shit up right then and there, but everything he does when he comes on is pre-planned. That's why he loses his line sometimes. He'll forget the names of people he's talking about. Man, what's that person? What's that guy? Oh, man, man, I, I forget the name. Because he forgot his lines. That's why. <laughs> and I'm going to go over some things tonight to explain why he forgets his lines. But he took over... The Eidos, because he's more popular, but I told you before, this is what coon agents do. They get inside, then they take it over because they need, what's going on, Esquire? Because they need everybody to now go to them. And unfortunately, uh, there are a lot of people who want to gravitate towards the person with the money. And that's the bottom line. See, right now, it's popular to put Umar Johnson down because he's perceived as being, quote, unquote, a bum, down and out. But, you know, he does have a building or buildings on his hand, so you got to give him at least that credit, which I will. You know, he said he was coming out with a book. At least give him the credit for materializing the book. Tariq Nashi said he was coming out with an apartment building that he was putting out in Haiti for the people there because he cares so much about the Haitians. He collected donations on it. Where's the apartment complex? I knew no $100,000 was going to build no... I, I don't give a damn what country it's in. It's not building no apartment complex in Haiti. Not enough to make a difference. What's going on, Mark Jones? Yeah, Shaka Khan. You could you could see the we 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 know we are what we are. Tina Turner said it. I mean, come on, with her cheekbones, come on. That's why you go on that uh 
finding their roots bullshit. People, they know who the fuck she's coming from Tennessee to. You know what the fuck is going on. You know that. So this guy, he didn't materialize that apartment complex. Well, this was what, a couple of years ago or before he put out the uh, his 1804. What's going on, Dilla? Before he put out his 1804 uh, video, which flopped, by the way. Uh, so what he does before he's about to put out a video, like keyboard musician said, when it's already uh, done. Oh, yeah, he was pepping out Haiti. When his stuff is already done, close to done, what he does is he starts to slow burn, start breaking it in, talking about what he's about to do, because like the buck breaking, he, he starts talking about that and talking about the topic of buck breaking, but he won't say that Nick Cannon was buck broken, which, which he was. So that's why he is a fraud. Again, with the Dr. Boyce scam, the man didn't, he acted like he didn't know nothing about it with the Charles Wu situation. People asked him, what you think of that uh, Dr. Boy situation? Oh, I ain't hear nothing about it. I don't know nothing about it. You know he's lying. But the 1804, that's what he did with the Haiti. He kept building that up, talking about Haiti, the Haitian Revolution. You know, all that stuff was to try and brainwash you to get it into your mind to start thinking about Haiti and blackness. And then you start saying, oh, man, I, I want to I wanna check out what the Haitians did. Oh, man, they, they, they beat the French. Oh, my God. <laughs> man, I gotta check it out. So then he's like, "Yeah, man, I'm collecting money uh, for an apartment complex in the Haitians to help our brothers and sisters." That's what he said, brothers and sisters. So when he wants that money, everybody's his brother and sister. <laughs> so he collected money for it. He said they were building it. It was under construction. It never materialized. He never revisited the topic. He lied. Say there are a lot of people out here who say that Tariq Nasheed delivers. He collects money and he delivers. When he collected money for Haiti, he did not deliver. When he collected money for backpacks for children, not only did he lie about the premise of collecting the money, he did not deliver. Because what I found out later on, which was why he was still collecting the money was that that backpack thing, that was some national situation that everybody was, uh, or somebody in particular was uh, partaking in that. He just jumped on that shit and said, this is a good opportunity to scam some money from black people and collect money acting like he's doing something. Then once the official program was done, he could say, hey, man, we collected backpacks. That's a scam right there. You can't deny that. That's a goddamn scam. So he'll say, oh, we collected the backpacks for the kids. I came through. No, you came through and got paid and you didn't come through for those kids. Somebody else came through. So this is what's going on. This is all BS. What's going on, kid? Green voice now got YouTube ads. Kind of weird looking. Yeah, I was on his Instagram. I had the people cracking up with my jokes, man. I tell you. <laughs> Like his teeth are funny, but he, he you know, I, I, he's a scammer. People act like they, they don't believe that he, Dr. Boyce is a scammer. His, his shit was blowing up. But see, they don't care who says I'm done with you. They're worrying about the people who says, as long as you do something for me, I'm with you because they got him. So he, he steals the aboriginal. Oh, he's trying to because you keep in mind. He used to say we're African and all that kind of stuff. He talked about the African, the diaspora, blah, 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 and so forth. He would never talk about we're Native American. What did he always say? The Native Americans owned slaves. Then he gradually started switching shit up because he's, he's like his, his commanders, his white masters said, tackle this Aboriginal stuff. These black people, they're getting too close. So I need you to take it over. So now he slowly incorporates that into his foundational Black American. We've been here. You listen to him. He, he, he conflicts with himself. We've been here before the white man got here. 
we've been here for 500 years. He makes up some history. Oh, the Spain came over, bought some Moors, dropped them off. Moors set up shop. That's supposed to be us. That's that's one theory he comes up with. What's going on, Anonymous? That's one thing he comes up with. Then he says, oh, on the other hand, after, after he said that, weeks after, he says, oh, we're indigenous to this land. And he, he comes with his fake uh, arguments to try and act like he's, he's, he's really feeling the conviction of it. But you listen to him carefully, he's stepping over his own BS. We were here before the white man. We're indigenous. Then later on, we came from Africa. Which is it, Mr. Nasheed? And, and which is it to the Pan-Africans? You can't say we were here before the white man or the compromise. Most of us were already here. Some of us came from Africa or some of us came from Africa. Others were already here. You can't play both sides of the fence. To me, that means that you're really not sure because you haven't done the research. And that really means that you don't believe it. That's what it really means. You know, you need to know what it is. That's why you can't talk about shit that you don't know about. And that's why Tariq Nasheed, when we get deeper into this, you're going to see how this man trips over himself. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. People can call in today. Matter of fact, I invited that uh, Puerto Rican lady to come on. <laughs> I forgot her name. Uh, matter of fact, let me copy it. You want to wait in the back, but I'm going to take a while, though, for this intro because we're going to, it's going to be a while. The Puerto Rican lady's on. I forgot her name. She comes on. Uh, let me know. Uh, so anyway, he doesn't have conviction on what he believes because he doesn't believe it. Everything he does is motivated by money. Um, so people in the Aboriginal world, we better be on the lookout for this guy, Tariq Nasheed, to try and take over. Some people, I see it in his chat room and other places, when he talks about that, they say, all right, yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah, we, we, we indigenous. Don't cheer him on, because he's going to do to you what he did to Yvette Carnell in Tone Talks. He's going to try and ruin what they did so that he could be the king. Yeah, we're going to get into his bullshit foundational American flag. See, that's another thing this con man does. It's funny with the products he comes out with, but it's not funny at the same time. You know? Comes out with a flag and shit. Oh, yeah, no doubt about that. You see what Young Pharaoh did. And you got to watch the language he uses, especially with the reparations, too. He, he keeps going into that and, and acting like, okay, well, first he said we should, we're entitled to a half a million dollars over five years. <laughs> then he changed it up. Oh, yeah, we get into that old goon juice. We're getting into, yeah, that keychain too. Because I had to laugh when I saw that shit. I said, come on. <laughs> I said, and he even laughs too when he uh, promotes these, these bootleg crazy products. <laughs> I wouldn't even call him a marketing genius because he just makes just enough to sell to the suckers. <laughs> Haitians don't even go to Haiti. <laughs> but this guy right here, gotta watch him with this talk. This is a coon agent of the highest order. And we're gonna get deep into with this man, when I say we're going to get deep, we're going to get deep. Another thing that I made note of, because I had to keep notes. I didn't have a pen and pad, but I used that notepad on the phone <clears throat> when he was on his last live, when he's de dealing with that Mexican guy. And I see a lot of people starting to understand and notice what I've been noticing and pointing out. When he lets on a Puerto Rican, he lets on the white man especially, or the any other other type of Latinos. Number one does no shit what he's talking about. He shuts the fuck up, and he respects the hell out of them. That's what I noticed. Other people are finally noticing it as well. 
He respects them. He lets them speak. He doesn't call them names at all. But look at the numerous videos, including the ones that I was able to make on. He called us names, the, the typical names, Dusty, broke. He's always looking at people's uh, apartment to see how we're living. And if they're living halfway decent, then he can't talk shit. But he'll brag about his house, which we're going to look into that house too, by the way. And we're really going to look into it. <laughs> Excuse me. He respects the, his, his massa. He's a goddamn coon. He looked scared when the white man was talking to him. That white man was a goddamn agent, too. I mean, if you believe that white man grew up in a black neighborhood, sounding the way he sounded with his views, you know he's full of shit. But see, he has these fake debates with these white uh, guys that set up. So he can act like he's tackling white supremacy. But as you know, I'm going to get in deep and talk about how he's tackling white supremacy. <laughs> you know how where I'm going. Yep, his house looks filthy. Which goes to show where he grew up and how his mentality is. And I'm going to show you his, <laughs> his house as it looked when it was on the market. It looked great. Once he got into it, looked like a, a guy who ran into a few dollars, but wants to still live ghetto on the inside. <laughs> so he keeps calling Hispanics white, too. I have a problem with that. When he was talking with the Puerto Rican, I'm going to get into that. He kept uh, interchangeably calling her African slave, slave colony of uh, Puerto Rico. And then he would call Latinos white. Again, you got to look at the repetitive brainwashing tactics. And that's one of them, to keep calling Latinos white. And I see other coon Negroes are falling for the trap. This is what happens when you brainwash people who, in effect, have no brain. They go and they repeat things that a person like Tariq Nasheed uh, propagates. It's so crazy to the point that people on YouTube are saying Ron Rivera benched, I uh, forgot the quarterback's name of Washington, Redskins. Yeah, I'm going to say it. Everybody else stop saying Redskins. God damn it, I'm going to say the Redskins. <laughs> the former Redskins, Washington football team. And I know people, I'm, what I'm going to say next, people are going to think I'm bullshitting. I got the email to prove it. I wrote Washington before they named that shit that. I said, you should just, then they want you to change the name, just make plain uniforms to call that shit Washington, D.C. football team. I swear to you. And then a couple of weeks later, they changed the guy. Yeah, Dwayne Haskins. They changed the name. I swear to you. I said, glad they took my advice. Then I emailed them back. I said, where's my uh, finder's fee? They didn't, they didn't get back to me. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I said, I used to get this CFL or catch it on MSG every now and then. I think every summer, Canadian Football League, in case people don't know. Because I'm like, oh, who won? Then I see that they had their uh, season canceled. But the Edmonton Eskimos team, I see that they changed their name to the Edmonton Football Team. I said, oh, I said, now I'm seeing a pattern here. This is how you could tell people weren't just upset because of the Redskins name was the Redskins, because now you got the correlation between Redskins, Mongol style natives, even though they don't have that color, and the Eskimos of Edmonton, Canada, Mongol style natives. So they had them erase the names of those teams. I think the Cincinnati Reds in baseball, I think. They just took away their mascot and try, try to change the meaning of the team without changing the name. So I don't know what this is going on. Maybe all this has to do with. Uh... Oh, I'm glad you brought that up because he said he paid for a funeral. He kept repeating it, but God damn it, he ain't showing any goddamn receipts. He said he has them. I didn't see them. 
you know, he'll, he'll throw a thousand here, a thousand there to some people, but that's petty cash compared to what he's getting because it's not coming out of his pocket. But it makes him look like a big shot. It's like I used to hang out with this guy. Uh, we would go out on dates with uh, different females, and I would pay, try to pay for me and my girl. But he would try to act like a big shot and say, no, I got the whole thing. And I would say, oh, no, no, thank you, sir. I got mine. And he's like, don't worry about it. I got it all. So he can act like a big shot. You know, and that's what Tariq Nashi does. You know, we have. Jews and moles. One of eight. Okay. <laughs> He stole her life's work. Like he, yeah, that's another thing. He claims that that was his mentor, his hero, but he's not following any of her guidelines and ideas. His family is a prime example of that. You know? You got brother in law like that. They get on your nerves, don't they? <laughs> Because it's like they they know what the fuck they're doing. They're trying to sun you, try to make you look like you're the cheap bastard who can't afford to pay for your girl. You know? <laughs> That's what they're trying to do. And I hate that. You know, sometimes I'm like, fuck it, pay. But after I got, uh, got wind of what he was trying to do, that's when I started insisting, I'll pay. And then he's like, no, I got it. I got it. I hate that shit. But yeah, with the... Uh, Francis Cress well saying he doesn't he, he he doesn't follow her rules. So oh they got a new feature on this uh thing I just noticed. But he doesn't follow her rules. So let me get back to this outline real quick so because it's gonna be a, a doozy, so to speak. Uh this is another one that got to me. He said that the small hats don't have no money. That's what he said. You notice, see, this is what I noticed. I know he did one show talking about the small hats. This is how he contradicts himself. Before, he would always say, oh, man, they don't run nothing. Just like Dick Gregory, slick Dick Gregory. Glad he's dead. That's that's what I just said. I'm glad he's dead. Can't wait for Farrakhan to join him because those are coon agents of the highest order. I disrespect coon agents. I don't give a damn who gets mad. Only only people who can get mad are people who got tricked or they're coon agents themselves. So this is what he said, like Dick Gregory. He said, oh, the small hats, they don't have no money. They don't rule nothing. You know, they, and they got to say it with the fake anger. So that, you know, it seems like uh, they're really for real. You know what I mean? They don't rule nothing. They don't own nothing. Oh, yeah, we about to get into who he, he lives around because he keeps lying and he, he says that his neighbors are East Indians, Asians. Never says any other black people, of course. Okay. <laughs> but he told on himself again. He's just a fucking liar. That's why I'm doing this. I'm tired of this. So he said this before he would say, <clears throat> he would always talk about the Holocaust and say, man, they had to fight. They had to fight. Watch for anybody, any Negro who's always talking about the Holocaust as if it's a real situation. Watch out for them. Now, you know you can't critique it on here because you know how that goes. Because I have videos critiquing it. Because, And believe me, I've debated small hats on this. When you leave small hats speechless, I don't mean to toot my own horn, but you know you're a bad motherfucker when you leave two small hats against one man speechless on their bullshit. What's going on, T-Tough? That's when you know you're a bad motherfucker. That's why you see Tariq will let that white man on and let the Puerto Rican on and let them stay on and get it all out. But when I come on or anybody else that's black comes on, we start asking just a simple question. Ah, uh, get this nigga out of here. You notice he's always calling us names. Niggas, Dusty, Black. Always talking about people's looks when it comes to black people. When it comes to that white man, there was a lot of material to go in on that white guy. <laughs> but he didn't even bother. And he halfway went on the Puerto Rican because 
she had black traits, but he still wanted to get with that. So he says the, the small hats don't have no money. He said, he's like, oh, I went to Brooklyn. They living in the projects. I told him and I tell other people the scheme that they do. See, the first of all, it's the outsider. Every building that somebody lives in, they'll look like projects uh, <laughs> to them. You know, that's that's what they'll say. But you got to understand the scheme that they have. If you look at, I'm not gonna get too deep into it because I don't want to give people excuses. <laughs> I need the one who claims to be a pro lack. Oh, yeah. That's what I believe. And there's no excuse for it. Um, but if you look at New York, you look at any city in this country, I think most people don't even think, man, who owns these buildings that I'm seeing? But if you actually check things out, you'll see who owns them. And if they don't have any goddamn money, how they own all this shit? So the scheme that they do, see, they keep importing people from various nations, mainly the Russian area. They own the buildings. They tell them apply for Section 8, apply for welfare, because to them it's money. That's how you get on. You pay their other brothers, the Section 8, the welfare, it's a scheme, reciprocal scheme. Then once they incorporate them into their system in this country, they go do their own thing and then they bring in the next batch. That's how that shit keeps working. Okay, yeah, I knew I knew a jackass would uh, make his way on here on this one. <laughs> and I think we can uh, probably assume who that might be. But don't worry, I'm not going to change the topic for this guy. <laughs> and I'm not going to uh, block him either. <laughs> yep. So when you lie and say that they don't have any money, when they own the banks, they own every damn, almost every damn pro sports team. And the goddamn commissioner of every goddamn sports team. <laughs> they own the fucking Google that we're on right now. And the YouTube. And everything else you could think of. They own Tariq Nashi's ass. Which is why they pimp him and tell him what to say. And they have no money? Get the fuck out of here. That's how you know you're dealing with a con man and a coon agent. Yeah, you dig. Shit, that might be his, his uh, black ass. I, I might tell some jokes on Tariq Nashi too tonight if I if I get that feeling. So that's another thing I'm trying to get uh, go live with him on because I want I want to take him down on that. You know what I mean? <laughs> so he also said the Puerto Rican governor. I'm gonna get into that. Is trying to be Anglo, but he still called her white. Then he called her a wannabe white, and then he also claimed to have. Latino friends, but yet he's always talking about them. He see he trips over his own bullshit. That's what he keeps doing. That's slick talk. Every time in the past, I always I would always hear mainly Mexicans or Chicanos in particular. They would always call white people Anglo. That's that slick talk. That means what they're really trying to come up with is saying your kind of white versus our kind of white. But they're not white at all. But that's what they think. And this is not coming from the whiter looking Latinos. These are coming from <laughs> the ones that obviously look like the kind that cut your yard. And that's no joke. So... You know, it is what it is. Let me see. Yvette Carnell can't let let go of that to wipe the floor with her back in December. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he, she has a few jokes that's funny herself, but yet I'm going to play her video in case people didn't see it. She was right about the fact that her event was way better than his. 
That's for damn sure. You know? Now, he does. He runs into the, to the small hats every time they tell him what's on the agenda. Is that even his real name? We're going to get into that. People say that. Yep. Yep, dominant society. See, that's why he uses white supremacy. That's why I always uh, back up with caution for people who say white supremacy. That's why I call it out. Small hat. That's why I did like the irritated genie. And they, they shut him down. I didn't see if he they brought him back, but small hat. Because some people ask, who is they? So that's why I don't bite my tongue. That's why I say small hat. Then now you know who they is. After you tell them who they is, then they start backtracking and lying and, and bullshit. So that's how you know they weren't really looking for any answers. So we're going to get into a lot of the things he said. He said California was named after a, here's another trick that he used. He, he slips them in. See, if you're a, a dimwit, you're not going to get these. What's going on? But if you're paying close attention, you can hear the contradictions. This is done on purpose. It's done to cover his ass later on. Now, he said that California was named after a this is his words, because I wrote it down right after he said it. A mythological black woman. And this is when he was arguing with that, I think, that Mexican guy. So he said <laughs> the woman that it was named after, she was fake. <laughs> so what was the point in bringing that up? I told you this guy is a cool one. I always say this who you marry is who you want to be. That's what I always say. The Spanish rice talk. Come on. If people been following my videos, as I was going through this and preparing for this, I realized a lot of the videos I made on the last channel, I did not put up. Because when this, this was the backup channel, because I get people on here who say, oh, you only got 800 views, 900 views. On the last channel, every video dropped had at least 2,000 views. Some had hundreds of thousands. Some had tens of thousands. Hey, Coons took it down. What can I say? But I started, when I was doing this one as a backup, I wasn't really, I was putting them on, but I wasn't really trying to promote it like that. I was just putting them on to have them on. So that's why I tell people, all the videos that you see on this channel with the lowest views had the highest views on the other channel. Hard to believe, but yeah, that's the way it was. And um, one of the videos I made that I would always talk about was the Spanish rice. I know the man stole the shit from me because he didn't talk about the shit until after. That's how you could tell. If they don't talk about the shit before you, and then after you do it, you hear them talking about it, that's how you know they got it from you. And then they can't explain it well. It's just like when you're in school. The professor tells you, hey, oh, can you explain this? Then you try to bullshit. You know, everybody thinks that they can bullshit the professor, but the professor knows when you're bullshitting them. <laughs> so they go but so far. That's why the professor will try to bullshit you. Start asking you some extra questions. Oh, well, how did that happen? He wants to see how far you could bullshit. <laughs> And oh, it happened like that. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. And uh, what's his name? What's that guy? The uh, other guy that helped him out. He wants to see if you know what you're talking about, or you just bullshit. So I talked. He talked about the Spanish rice. He couldn't really explain it too well. He just but at the end he said, "That's that Joloff rice." And he's always trying to act like he's serious when he's talking. That's that Joloff rice. I tell you, man. When I tell you what I tell you. I'm telling you because of my years of research and my actual hands-on experiences. That's the difference between me and a Tariq Nashi. He's full of shit. I'm for real. 
Now, again, I'll repeat this very fast. I was dating a Nigerian woman for five years. That's how I put this shit together. We went to a party, one of her Nigerian parties. And she's, she knew I wasn't really too interested in eating the Nigerian food. <laughs> you know, some of it smelled good and everything, but, you know, you know how it is, man. <laughs> and some of it actually looked good, but that, that dough thing, I forgot what they called it, that you pick the dough up and then you dip it in sauce or meat or whatever and then you eat it. I'm like, that didn't look too appetizing to me. Maybe I should have just... You know, tried it, but I just never did. But I did try the rice because I said that looks like Spanish rice. It's the first thing that popped into my head. And I said, what's this rice called? She told me, she's like, oh, we had this for the longest time. I said, damn, how, how far is this go? Let's go back. I said, did because uh, I knew right away it's because it's Nigeria. So I already knew that the British didn't introduce it to them because the British don't eat that shit. So... so yeah, it could be. I'm thinking foo foo too. That's what I'm thinking. Foo foo. Uh, I would always laugh when I hear that foo foo. <laughs> but I'm like, damn, it looks just like Spanish rice. It tastes like Spanish rice because at the time I was getting that uh, Spanish rice in the package because I would eat that. I, you know, I like that. And I said, yeah. I said this shit makes sense. Nigeria is in West Africa. The Moors come from West Africa. And uh, obviously, they invaded Spain. They brought Spanish, the Spanish rice to Spain. As a matter of fact, no, the, no, the British don't eat that Spanish rice as their staple, the way they do in Spain, Portugal. Matter of fact, I shouldn't even tell this because I know Tariq Nasheed is listening right now, but. Portuguese and Spanish cuisine, even going into France and Italy. That's the African food. No doubt about that. But now I grew up on rice. My mother used to uh, cook the Carolina rice. That was her thing. She didn't like Uncle Ben's. <laughs> she liked that Carolina. Carolina. Now I eat that organic rice. That's all I eat now. <laughs> yeah, this Nigerian, I was saying she had a nice face, wore dress, she was the dress, the heels, and makeup type. No weed, but she did wear a hairpiece <laughs> every now and then. <laughs> she did have a body, though. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. Lean frame, big ass titties, decent butt. So let me get to the last point before I get into this uh, audio visual experience. Um, he also would call Mexican, Spanish, and Negro or mulatto mix like he did this guy. Then he claimed that they look Puerto Rican. Obviously, this guy only knows Hispanics from a California perspective. He see if you don't grow up grow up around Puerto Ricans and uh, Dominicans. Oh, well, she must be. I'm gonna tell you this, man. I'm gonna tell you what people don't realize. This Nigerian woman was never musty. I never spelled anything funky on this lady at all. In fact, she was the cleanest smelling woman I have ever had. I mean, so clean you stick your finger in her. No kind of smell. Actually smelled fresh. And I think I told this story in the video before, but every time afterwards, she would, I would see her go on the toilet. She would ask for a cup of water. No soap, no towel, nothing. She would just clean herself with the water, do something, suck it in, push it out and all that kind of stuff. I said, God damn. I said, that's all it takes. I said, what's up with all these other women? I said, what's up with that? She's like, I don't know what they're doing, but this is what we do. I don't know what the hell she's doing, but uh, that, now if you want to talk about trying to copy an African uh, tradition. I, I say African women, they need to teach a lot of women that technique. Shit. Because that shit works. So 
I'm from Atlanta. What's going on, Trip? Yeah, so he's out in California, so he's not used to Puerto Ricans. I'm sure there must be a few out there, but they get lost in the mix, I'm sure. And I was watching this uh, video about this guy. He has a uh, gang website, uh, California Gangs. They have some Dominican woman on there. And she was explaining how it is to be out in California and being a Dominican. And she said that she got discriminated against because they said, oh, she's not a Latino because they call her black. <laughs> and then as is usually the case, once the once they ask her what she is, she's like, I accept my African heritage. She's like, I'm black, but I got something else in the mix too. You know, I'm mixed too. So they can't, Dominicans can never commit to full blackness. But she kept trying to integrate with the so-called Latino community, which are Mexican types and Chicanos. So she was pissed off because they wouldn't accept her. They didn't consider her to be a real so-called Latina. But yet, instead of, that's the only reason why she was forced to accept some Africanists. Because that's the only way Dominicans ever do it. They, they got to get back into a corner. <laughs> and um, even then, she was like, damn. Uh, she couldn't fully admit that she was black, though. You know what I mean? So after all this, they don't have too many out there, but out here, <laughs> they're everywhere. But even now, they're getting overwhelmed by Mexican types. So the point I'm trying to make is Tariq Nasheed is ignorant because he thinks everybody who speaks Spanish are of the same origin. Uh, and I see a lot of people do it, too. They keep thinking, oh, man, uh, Puerto Ricans eat tacos. Uh, everybody eats tacos, but that's not their cuisine. And I keep trying to tell people, and you could take these notes, Mr. Nasheed, because I know he's tuning in. Uh, Puerto Ricans and their cuisine, like I always make note of, is similar to the rest of the Caribbean. And that's why I always argue when somebody says, uh, well, we're not uh, like the rest of the Caribbeans. We're from Spain. We got that Spanish culture. I say, well, the food in Spain is African. That's where he got he got that shit from me. I'm telling you right now, he got it from me because I do the research on the shit. I don't wait for a master teacher to uh, tell me what to think. I do my own research because if I don't get answers from somebody else, I go do my own thing. Yeah, everything. Jamaican beef patties, empanadas, same shit. Rice and peas, all, all I mean, the shit is similar throughout the Caribbean. And a lot of people like to say, okay, well, it's uh, native. Some people like uh, Tariq, they like to say, uh, oh man, Puerto Ricans and them, they're Taino Indians. Get that bullshit out of here. No matter how many times you tell people, and I'm going to move on to the main thing, they keep saying, they, they, they try to trust with the Puerto Rican, Dominican, how they identify themselves. If you ask them all, they're going to say that they're white first, native second. And if they are backed into a corner, they'll say African. They can look like Wesley Snipes. They can look like whatever the fuck they want to look like. That's how it's going to go. And you look at that Chris Paul State Farm commercial. You got Alfonso Ribeiro playing Chris Paul. Now, I haven't looked up Chris Paul's origins, and the reason why is because of his last name. You know, I, I don't know that last name. You know, that could be a tricky one. <laughs> and I do, when I look at Chris Paul a little closer, I see his eyes are a little lighter. So you never know what's, what's going on with that. But the bottom line is you got Alfonso Ribeiro, who's a Dominican, playing a black man in those uh, commercials. So, you know, it is what it is on that. And Mexicans and Cubans don't like, like each other. They're not all the same, though. That's, that's what Tariq Nashi doesn't understand. And even everybody in Latin America, tacos, that's not their food either. That's a Mexican thing. <laughs> that's not a Guatemalan thing. That's not a Peruvian thing. That's a Mexican thing. 
You got some people out here that are dumb enough to say, oh, Latin is a uh, culture. It's not a culture. It's nothing. <laughs> it's just one way to try and group everybody together like African. That's all it's about. So anyway, let me get into this audio-visual shit portion of the uh, thing. Because I told you, we're doing this Lenin honor style to Tariq Nashi. Because <laughs> we're not letting this guy escape. Uh-oh, damn Cubans were white. Yeah, see, that's what I always try to tell people. Uh, matter of fact, I had that debate with George Macon and a few other people on that Taz exclusive channel. Uh, I might post it on Facebook or put the link in here, but you can see how they backtrack and they get frustrated when I start rocking the truth and I don't accept their bullshit that they're telling me. They get frustrated. But I always say in the Caribbean, when it comes to any you want to call Latino white, I always say Cubans. The ones who are Call white, I say uh, you can call, probably call them white because they do look whiter than other so called Latinos, and that's prob probably because of that segregation. But even then, the ones who look straight up white usually find out that they had a white one white parent and another uh, type fat Joe's black and white. Well, I mean, you can see the black in them too with that nose, skin tone. You can see a little Mongo with the eyes. So you see a lot in Fat Joe. But when he had hair, his hair was blondish. I mean, people are mixed. I mean, uh, it's, you just, when people are just, what they are is mixed, period. And, mixed, and mixing doesn't always go in evenly. <laughs> you know, you got different types. You look at Brazil, that shit is crazy. <laughs> you know? Uh, Cubans were always the whites of Hispanics. Yeah, that's what I said. I mean, you can even see that when you used to watch that uh, the first 48 when they were in Miami. Uh, what's that guy, Rogerio? I think he was married to a black woman. But he looked more white. I mean, you could look closer at him and see, okay, well, he's not totally white, but to me, he looked mostly white. White enough to say, okay, that's good enough. Bob Vila, because I was just watching a little bit of this whole house today. I said, hey, didn't somebody else used to host that? Yeah, Bob Vila. He was a Cuban. Shit. That's the way it is. Matter of fact, uh, just found out Eddie Van Halen is half uh, uh, Indonesian. <laughs> or was half Indonesian. And I said, yeah, I knew something was always up that nose of his. Always, I always said, man, something's up. I didn't, I didn't know that, but I knew uh, Jimmy Page was half uh, Asian too, though. This uh, Jefferson J Javis guy. This guy I'm going to keep an uh, eye out on your, your ass. So <laughs> don't think I'm not watching you. But when you get cut, I don't give you the warning. I just do it. Because I know from my own experience... I hate that shit more than somebody telling me. <laughs> the, <laughs> Vanessa Demi has part of from keeping in Puerto Rican. Her fine ass shit. She's still alive? Shit. <laughs> Her fine ass. She was a disgusting, filthy asshole. But anyway, let me get to the, uh, the actual evidence here tonight. And uh, as Lennon Arter says, uh, the Super Chat PayPal information is right there, too. <laughs> Shit, I might as well shit, do it too. Shit. Anyway, let me get into a few. Oh, slash here. Yeah. Yep. Damn, she is still alive. She got to be 75, probably still hoeing. <laughs> so, anyway, let me get to this. Let me uh, share the screen. I don't even know where I'm going to start first, but let me. Start somewhere. Matter of fact, let me, I don't, I don't think I want to start there. Let me start here. <laughs> let me play this video first. So this is a video I forgot to put up. Uh-oh, what happened? 
Man. Fuck. Now, this is a video of the interior. Matter of fact, I know where I'll start. I'll start right here. Matter of fact, let me let me not do that. Let me go here first. Let's start with his uh, products. Matter of fact, I'll start right here since this is kind of the order I put this shit in. Puerto Rican governor. This is this lady right here. So you get the up close. Obviously, her hair is dyed. And I always tell you about the Caribbean Puerto Rican mentality. They want to be as white as possible. That's no surprise. That's why they dye their hair. They dye their hair red. They dye their hair blonde. But as you can see, and, and you see that with Mexicans too. It doesn't matter what they look like, how dark they are. They try to think that, okay, well, I'll dye the hair blonde or red because a lot of people don't realize that a lot of people in Spain and in Portugal have red hair. Why? Because it's shocking to people, but white people really are mutant albinos. That's why you see red hair no matter where you go. Because that's the progeny. But anyway, I don't want to get deep into that uh, and, and sidetrack this. But yeah, as you can see this, if you saw this lady walking down the street, you wouldn't think that's a white woman. Maybe Tariq Nashi would, but he, he wants to call this uh, plump individual uh, uh, a white lady. She looks like that, Joe, <laughs> in a sense. I mean, if you're good at reading facial features, you can see the nose, you can see the skin tone, but the eye part got a little bit of mongoloid activity going on. But see, these people, they relish in their anything that they can hold on to that's white. Now, see, this is the guy I knew as a Puerto Rican governor. That's why I said, hey, now this guy, this is the, the predecessor. You don't see Puerto Ricans like him <laughs> in New York or the Northeast. Not too often. I saw maybe one or two in my lifetime. Now, I could call this guy white enough mainly because of those eyes. Now, if he had dark eyes, that'd be a different story, but those eyes help bring in the whiteness, you know what I mean? And a smaller mouth. And the way I judge Hispanics, this is just me, you can do it how you want to. The way I judge Hispanics on how white they are is I say, if you take this man, take away his name, take away Spanish accent, would you think white man or Latino or some other type of shit. I think white man, so he qualifies as white to me. But this is the guy I remember uh, most. Let's see the, the previous one. But see, this is what I'm saying. Like, they like to find the whitest ones. You know, when I did the Caribbean video and showed the Caribbean leaders, again, this is not just uh, Puerto Rico. This is every goddamn where. Okay, they don't have a picture of that. That's every damn damn where in the Caribbean. So I showed that. See, to show his uh, products, this man got 10 million websites. Every time he comes up with the product, <laughs> he comes up with a website. Now, this has to be the silliest product. Why would somebody even think to come up with some shit like this? But this is the type of shit you should find at a gas station. <laughs> But this man wants you to buy this shit for $9.99. I think Karen Keychain. I mean, this is crazy. How much is this shit? Plus $2 shipping and handling. This man is out of his goddamn mind. No other product. That's the simplest webpage round. GoDaddy. This guy is a hustler to the extreme. Of course, we know about this. <laughs> Ogu and juice. This is all, these are all Chinese products. As you can see by the packaging, this is that flea market style Chinese packaging. Probably no barcode. Nineteen ninety nine. If you look at pepper spray, matter of fact, let me just. Look 
Okay, pepper spray. Look at that. That's a sophisticated container. And how much is this? This is eight bucks. <laughs> uh, what's the size on this one? But you see it has a lot of uh, regulations, a lot of labels, I'm trying to see what the size is on this. 35 bursts. <laughs> I guess they don't go by ounces maybe. Oh, 0.79 ounces. Okay, so let's see. Damn, they don't even have that information on the package. Oh, now he's trying to sell the face mask separate. Guess that package deal. Oh, he's trying to see the socks didn't sell. The package deal didn't sell. So he said, fuck it. Let's divide the shit up. Who the fuck is going to buy Ogun socks? Ogun juice socks. I mean, come on. Nobody even knows what Ogun juice is. Nobody's going to wear any Star Wars socks or some shit like that. They want to sell some Ogun juice socks. Ogun juice t-shirt, 26 bucks. He ain't offered a t-shirt with that package deal before, did he? No. Nope. He offered that uh, that book that didn't sell, that 1804 that didn't sell. But you see this package. This is that cheap Chinese package. This is a website just made strictly for that. Every time he comes out with a new uh, cheap-ass product, he makes the website, and, his, and the website is only to sell this product only. And as you can see, it doesn't have any real details on it because he is selling it to his internet audience only he's not it's not sold in stores there's no there are no commercials see go daddy and go daddy will have some cheap one-page website shit it's simple to come up with this shit but he acts like he put it together and spent a lot of money probably bought about three thousand of them uh if i want to be generous maybe five thousand but more like three thousand of them and then probably paid two dollars. Let me do the math on this shit real quick. <laughs> so it's two dollars times three thousand. That's six thousand. Three thousand times twenty dollars. That's 60000 See? He makes a quick cash, buy him a new car, pay his bills. <laughs> all this shit costs but so much money, nothing at all. But, hey, as long as you buy it, he's getting paid. Now, Hidden Colors, obviously, this is his main thing. But like I said, it's still cheap productions. Stream or download now. I could stream this shit for free anywhere. Just like I got the Forbidden Planet and a whole bunch of other <laughs> shit. <laughs> I could get it even faster now. I got this fast-ass internet now. <laughs> $89 for his box set. And I wonder if it even comes packaged like that. If it does, then I'll actually give him a point for that. <laughs> now, this foundational Black American bullshit. Hoodies, CDs of people... He doesn't really respect because if you notice the people on this shirt, these are the same people. When somebody black comes on his live, he's always talking shit about their appearance. Hidden colors, five, all this $20 each for this bullshit. 1804, 20 bucks. Download the films. Yeah. <laughs> I think we all know how to download these and they're not even worth downloading. I still didn't see part four all the way because it was boring, part five, the art of black warfare. That's just the catch uh, phrase or whatever. Look at that. He's selling hidden colors one through four plus 1804 for 75. This is 1804. This shit flop. So that's why he's been, you've been seeing this in package deals. He didn't put these other ones in package deals. So I guess they must be doing halfway decent. But this is his main thing. But even this website is just a basic website. One page website with a couple of pages to the add to cart. And that's it. 
So I don't know how much he's making off of this shit because obviously I'm sure he doesn't have a barcode or, uh, you know, for real uh, calculations, $27 for Amazon International. Get out of here with that. Let's look at this other website because he has tons of websites. <laughs> I don't even think I'm scratching the surface of all. Tariq Radio. <laughs> He puts his, and he had this picture on here too. I'm like, I know where he got it from, but <laughs> I kept looking at this person right here and I kept saying to myself, man, I don't know, man. I don't know if there was something to ra raise my uh, antenna about a suspicious looking character. It's this one right here. <laughs> this one ain't looking right. Then he has him on. Now he's always talking. That's another thing. He's always talking about bussy. Where did he learn that term from? Why does he keep talking about bussy? Because that's a part of the agenda of his masters. You see, he's always talking about these homosexuals all the time. Now, he didn't know this man was a Caribbean until I pointed it out. And see, unlike him, I get the credit. I forgot who gave me the info, but somebody on here pointed out that this man was a Caribbean. And I said, damn it, that now everything is making sense now. So he has all this shit on. He doesn't like black people. That's what you got to keep in mind. And we're going to get into that pretty soon. See, he always has to advertise this bullshit on here. Breaking the cycle lecture. <laughs> See, he's doing what Dr. Boyce does, which is trying to sell you on your feelings and your emotions. And it's the same formula that Charles Wu and other marketers get rich quick uh, schemes. It's the same technique. You want to be free. You want to belong. So they come up with schemes to touch your heart. And while you touch, they're touching your heart, they want you to touch a wallet and give them their money. Give them your money. That's what this is all about. It's the same thing that I was telling you about with that Mona V and Cutco knives and, you know, those get rich quick package deals, which is what Dr. Boyce Watkins is trying to sell you with his bullshit classes. Buy this package. It's only $99.99. Soon, you too will be able to float the seas on a yacht, drive a Lamborghini, buy any home that you choose, even get a private jet. It's only $99.99. That's a small price to pay to live life. But see, they can't sell it for $19.99 because you're going to be like, damn, if it's that cheap, must not be about nothing. But if it's $99.99, $250, you're going to start thinking to yourself, damn, there might be something to it. I don't really want to spend that money, but damn, if it costs that much, there might be something to it. Listen, when it comes to get-rich-quick schemes, the only part of the scheme that works is when you give your money to the people who's trying to sell you advice on how to get rich quick. That's the bottom line. I learned that as a teenager. I don't understand why adults can't figure that shit out. Nobody told me as a teenager. I just kept watching the infomercials because I was intrigued. As a teenager, I would say, man, that's something else. <laughs> you know? <laughs> I'm like, man. But when I saw the price, I said, I said, shit, I ain't paying that. Now, I could have obtained it. I think I did buy one, but I ain't going to tell you how. Because when I was a teenager, I was doing some things. <laughs> you know? I didn't have to pay for too much. <laughs> but, uh... Then once you get the package, you realize, God damn, you got to keep on putting more money and more money and more money into it. You give them more and more and more. You get nothing but hope and dreams. Then you inquire about how come it's not working for me. You got to work harder. You got to put energy into it. You're not doing enough. 
I mean, you got to hear all that shit. You might as well just keep working your job because that's, that's what the people on the job tell you. <laughs> well, you, you want more? You got to work more. Work harder. Same old bullshit. But that's what they do. Let's see what the more is. Intellectual, international racism lecture. Oh, advertised on the show. Let's see how much he... One week. You know, all those... Nine minutes of worth of ads that he has before uh, each YouTube video. This is where this is going. See, this is how he gets slick. YouTube is free. Yeah, he's char- he, he has numbers, so I guess he could charge. Professor Griff, I remember, I remember he used to charge when he and Zaza Ali had their little show. This guy's funny. $100 a week, sis. He's getting money all the way around. He's a hustler. There ain't no doubt about that. And then two weeks, $80 to entice you to pay. Period. (laughs) But as we all know, unless you catch the shit live, which I usually, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. But everybody knows when you listen to his radio show on YouTube, scroll past the first nine minutes. I'm sure everybody has to know that by now. (laughs) But it doesn't matter. He's still getting the money. Uh, Pay-per-view special. Let's see what he had. Are we a post-racial America? In this video lecture recorded live at the University of Northern Colorado, Tariq Nashi discusses the truth about race in America. One hour. $29. You can see this guy, what, three, four times a week, probably almost five times a week, between YouTube and Instagram. Why would you want to pay to see more conferences and his opinions, which are not genuine? People say that he's not a con man because he delivers, because this shit is a delivery. He's a con man because his pretense on what he's selling you is all manufactured BS. People call Umar Johnson a con man. But they say he doesn't deliver, but I argue that you got to give him at least a little bit of credit because he technically delivered on something. And this and, and the credit that you want to give him or don't want to give Umar Johnson, that's the credit that you'll give Tariq Nashi because Tariq Nashi presents it in a prettier package. But when you look behind the con, then you see that he's giving you nothing. I'm sure he does all the artwork, the Photoshop and all that. This is some quick shit, easily made up, real quick. (laughs) He doesn't hire people to do this shit. He does it himself. So let's see. Links and merchandise. Let's see what he has on here. Okay, well, here's his other links. Let's see which one I didn't find. The United Players of America. Okay, that's done. Doesn't need to update the website. Tariq Live, that's done. (laughs) Hidden Colors is still around. Apparently, that's the only one making money. See, when the shit ain't making money, you don't renew the shit. Mac Lessons, let's see if this shit is still around. Okay. I don't know who the fuck is buying this shit or who the fuck needs some Mac Lessons. But if you got to buy a Macking book, I feel bad for you. (laughs) I mean, damn. From this guy, his pimp suit. (laughs) This guy is all about ego. Mac lessons. 2014, that's when he made this shit's old. Let's see what the fuck he's selling. The Art of Macking, the original book of game. I can't believe anybody bought this. I think his bosses must have uh, bought the cop- a lot of copies to try to make it successful or they lied about the numbers. Who the fuck would buy this shit? The Elite Way, 10 Essential Rules for Dealing with Women. And he marries his woman. No offense. I mean, she seems cool, but that doesn't seem like the type of woman that he talks about he should have <laughs> the Mac within 
more time-tested secrets of the Mac game. You buy this, you can find the Mac within. And you can find yourself getting some women. So I think guys like the Big D- Big J Triple X, maybe they might want to look into this um, Mac Within book. He might be able to get something. You see the woman he has on the book cover. This is your black uh, activist. This is your... Come on. Look at that. This is your black activist. This is your uh, black power man. It's not the... Uh, the the art of getting black women, the art of gold digging. Yeah, he uh, you know, now this is one book that this man this this man might be on point with <laughs> right here. The art of gold digging because this man right here <laughs> he definitely knows how to dig for that gold. Play or be played, dating and relationship game for the ladies. Oh, now he knows about what the ladies want now. Well, I guess he's supposed to be a, a, a Mac, right? Black players. See, these are some books of his I never heard of. I guess they must have really flopped. Reprint of the 70s Urban Pimp Lifestyle Classic. Reprinting and, I guess, putting it in his name, huh? To Weak Sunglasses. Yeah, this is another product he had. I think he has some cologne, too. This guy will sell you anything he thinks will make him a, a, a penny. $53 for some cheap-ass Chinese sunglasses he probably got in bulk from the Chinatown in Los Angeles or some shit like that. (laughs) If anything, I I don't even know if he branded them. He doesn't give me details on this shit. You just buy the shit and take it as it is. As you can see, his hair was thinning on the top right here, which is why he started uh, growing his hair out. It's not because of COVID. It's because his hair was thinning and people always talked about that. Uh, Beluga whale shit going on there. So, risque elite cologne. Oh, here's the cologne right here. He says sold out. So that means it's no longer in production. <laughs> Which explains why he never talked about that too much. But again, an Asian woman on the cover. His mink slide group. Uh, <laughs> white man in the group, but he's black power or. A black activist fighting against white supremacy. The Tariq Live DVD series. <laughs> oh my God. This guy is funny with his low down products. Part two. Is he a comedian? Is he a lecturer? I mean, is he a fucking soul singer? I mean, what the fuck? Shit. Tariq Live, Miami. A lecturer in Miami. That looked like some type of rap uh, show or something. Yeah, that's an intellectual lecture? Come on. Series four in Chicago. Rel- relationships, riches, and race. <laughs> this guy, I mean, if you can't see through the fraud and behind the con, that is Tariq Nasheed. I don't know what to say. And I know this guy is watching. He claims he doesn't watch anybody's videos, whether it's Michi X's or... Cynthia G's, but somehow he gets wind of them and starts critiquing them. Uh, how are you going to watch something and know about it if you don't watch it? You're lying. Mac Lessons DVD. Step-by-step instructions for success with the ladies. And look at the kind of ladies. Well, can't do that. 25 bucks. I swear to you, I don't know who's watching, uh, watching this shit, buying this shit. But if you're buying this shit, shame on you. I think I did that pay-per-view. Oh, no, I didn't. The real Egypt, huh? (laughs) This guy. Anything. Sex, magic, rituals of the Illuminati. Maybe he might know about that. Black feminism. Audio. Black secret societies. You might know about that. The myth of white supremacy? Now it's a myth. Secret society. He's going to use Darth Maul on here. Copyright infringement. <laughs> Interracial Mac. Week part two. Dating women with kids. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Who are you? Matt Blessings in Hawaii. Oh, my God. Culture of ignorance. Yeah, you're ignorant if you buy any of his shit. The Illuminati. See, he, he doesn't talk about that Illuminati shit anymore. Bullshit history. That's what he talks about. Message to Black Women. Yale University lecture. Religious macking. I'm sure the students probably bought him there. I'm sure. I don't think Yale bought his ass there. Mac Lessons in Brazil. Making sure that that's not what I think it is. <laughs> Message to white America. Mac it for money. Get women to break bread. <laughs> Come on, man. This guy is fucking ridiculous. But this is what people, this is one of his websites, many of his websites to make money. King Flex Entertainment. I guess this is what he must pay his taxes through. And if that is the case, these are all the things that he comes up with. These are just simple websites, nothing complex shit that he just throws together himself because he doesn't want to pay for the shit. That's why with the More Us app and the other shit, it takes so long because he's figuring out how to put the shit together. And if he has to, if he's forced to pay somebody, then he'll finally do it. Let's see, powered by Weebly. Do it yourself shit. Another website. <laughs> High on apparel. Ogun shirt. This <laughs> guy. Why are you advertising Ogun if you're about foundational black Americans and this African shit? We don't know what the fucking Ogun is. Now you say we're Aboriginal. What does this have to do with Ogun? So maybe you need to get rid of this and come out with an Aboriginal juice. Do that, Nashi, but I know you're not going to do it. Which brings us to this latest con. And this is the con, people. Make no mistake about it. Now, this one, of course, is a bigger money maker when it's put together well. So that's why he has to make this one look a little bit better, a little bit more convincing. Again, he uses the photos of black Americans. But again, these are the very people in appearance. You see these black people right here have a more consistent appearance. Nobody's half white. Nobody's uh, uh, with green eyes and blonde hair. <laughs> but these are the same black people that uh, Tariq Nashi refers to as quote unquote niggas. Niggas. You dig? You know, once he, people started criticizing them on the you dig, using that old 1970s uh, <laughs> vernacular, you dig? Can you dig it? Then he started going, you dig? You dig? Trying to think that's cool. You dig? With the toothpick and shit, you dig? <laughs> but he's trying to make this look like something that we are. We Obviously, this is some made-up shit. Simply put together, steal a picture, <laughs> blow it up, come with this, steal a few more pictures, trying to act like you care about black people. The man... Married nobody looking like this. The man's sister married nobody looking like this. But yet, this man wants us to believe that he's about combating white supremacy. But instead, he wanted to marry people. Let me see if this blows up. Okay. I'm sure this is some picture he stole and didn't even give the credit. This lady got a wild uh, situation going on here. Now, this is black. A lot of people today, they'll say, uh-uh. People say, now that Puerto Rican, they were arguing, a lot of people were saying this Puerto Rican lady wasn't black, which I'm getting tired of people saying that. I'm about to, I, I think I went into that. This lady looked like she might be half Chinese or Vietnamese. But I don't know how they qualify, but <laughs> it is what it is on that. He comes up with this bullshit flag. You see, once again, this is some cheap Chinese shit you see at the flea market. Fake-ass flag. So this is designed to not only net him money, but so this should be around so you can actually feel a sense of pride. 
having your foundational Black American pride created by Tariq Nashi, 1526. If we're Aboriginal, why is it 1526, Mr. Nashi? $9.99 plus probably $2 shipping and handling. Let's see. <laughs> Yep, about two dollars shipping and handling. And I can guarantee you this shit probably cost him probably no more than seventy-five cents a piece. It's about as cheap as they come. Foundation, you, you go around with this, people are gonna be like, "What the fuck is that?" But see, this is the way of him to take ownership of shit. Next, what's up? What's up next? I can guarantee you, you see where he's going with this. I can guarantee you a Native American situation or flag. But one of these days in the future, matter of fact, I ain't even going to say nothing because I know he's going to try and get to it before I get to it. But I just say phenotypes tell a lot of stories. But I'm not going to get deep into that. I'm going to leave Mr. Nasheed to speculate what I mean, where I'm going with it, and see if he can get it right when he tries to steal the topic. But again, my family go back on this again. I have to stress because Mr. Nasheed is the man who stressed that Black Americans are African and were taken as slaves by Native Americans. He said that's the only reason why we're Native Americans. But now he's changing his story. He's changing his story now. Now, we've been here before the white man. He says this is the only reason why blacks and Native Americans are claiming. The man doesn't look deep into it. He doesn't believe it because he's a coon agent. This is what he likes to uh, talk about, but yet he doesn't. Now, you see these people right here. Even these people don't look African. That's what I keep telling people. That's not an African phenotype. Now, this man will show pictures of everybody else, but he won't show pictures of his mother-in-law, and he won't show pictures of his sister and her family. But see, again, this is designed to tug at the heart, to say, oh, man, you know what? Back in the day, we were orderly. We had it together. Well, what the fuck is all this? <laughs> Maybe that's just what they did back there, hopefully. <laughs> but you see that a lot of them are permed out. At least it wasn't weave, but. And as you can see, see, he shows the images, tiny ass, quickly written history, the bullshit you. But. His main thing is, in between all that, buy the flag. Get your foundation of Black American flag right now. A mini flag at that. He knew he wouldn't give uh, want to give you a bigger size flag because that costs too much money. This is the main goal. Sell the flag. That's cheap. You might say, okay, I'll contribute. To what? Then the T-shirt. But this conference, this is the main issue. This is the main money getter. That's what it's all about. And speaking of that, let me get to that real quick. I don't even know if I should even get to this because she might, you know, she might try to uh, get me. I'm going to give her the credit. I'm like, she had her, turn this shit off. Okay, fine. Turn this off. See, I give her credit on her. Her shit was professional. Her shit was right. And she's right. Look at this. It's like a high school auditorium, an old school high school. (laughs) 
So this was her event. Nice looking, comfy, professional, high tech. This shit is damn sure janky. That bullshit flag. See, so I, I support I support Yvette when it comes to this because she was damn sure right on this. Oh, yeah, and this kitty critter, critter club here. This is some Korean animal show. That shit is fucking addictive for some odd fucking reason. <laughs> I don't know if you can hear, but we don't need to hear because I'm a uh, narrate. Look at that. This man looked like he about five feet tall, though, Judge Joe Brown. Look at that. It's, it's horrible. So that's what she's pointing out. I don't even know if you can hear it. Let me turn it on. Let me. Yeah, you can't hear it, so I just want to make sure. But see, this is what she's talking about, the professional level of her uh, thing, the professional display. Hers is fit for TV and uh, fucking C-SPAN or, you know, hers is fit to buy, to watch. Tariq Nasheed <laughs> is not even fit for public access because he, he, he's a cheap bastard. He, he tries not to spend too much money on his projects. That's his goal. Now, at the very least, what she's saying is, at the very least is, hey, look, we put more, we, we took the time to choose a prime location that was right for the audience. Now, I didn't agree with her having these white people in there, though. I don't know what that was all about. <laughs> but so that's her body right there. That's a thin woman. I don't know why she got to wear those manly suits just to send the message, but it's all right to wear a skirt if you're a woman. She had the food. He didn't have any food. She said it was 10 bucks. So, you know, that's the point on that. She actually, actually had something. And uh, I'm going to get to this Puerto Rican thing in a second. Yeah, matter of fact, let me segue into it like this. Now, this is somebody who made a video showing that <laughs> Tariq Nashi, you know, I'm going to get to the pictures. You know, I showed these pictures before, and I like to keep showing them. If you recall, I had a video on this as far as... Uh, his sister marrying what Tariq Nashi. He says Latinos are white. So that means she married a white man, according to him. He never talks about her. He showed, I don't know if that was the same sister or some other sister he had. Could have been her. Looked like she put on some weight at that uh, FBA conference. Yeah, Jabari. Yeah, I got another screen going now. Jabari did speak at that. FBA conference, and that's the other thing I pointed out too. I said, "Why the hell was he there?" <laughs> he's, he's a Caribbean. He's from Barbados. How? I mean, if that's the case, you might as well had uh, Jackie Chan there. Shit. <laughs> I mean, damn. Half sister. Well, I'll tell you this: they look alike. Somebody came into my chat room, which is probably him, trying to distance himself from his sister. But yeah, at the goddamn wedding, we see the goddamn pictures. It, yeah, she ain't looking bad. She's working with a little something, but see, she gives her body to this man. Like he gives her his body to the to the white supremacy. See, somebody came in my chat room and tried to say that that's his adopted sister. <laughs> They got the same jaw. You know, Tariq Nashi got this pit bull style jaw. You know, <laughs> that's why he's trying to grow the hair up besides this. See that ball patch right there? Even when he tried to get the uh, 
old school Buster Rhyme type hairdo, <laughs> you can still see that. So <laughs> it must be a friend. See, king and queen, they're bonded together. Now you got to ask yourself, why is a man who is fighting against white supremacy as he sells it to us, how come when they get married, they marry into white supremacy, the same kind of white supremacy they keep talking about? He says Latinos are white. He called that black Puerto Rican lady a white woman. He called the governor of Puerto Rico a white woman. So if they're white, obviously this guy must be white. Come on. Come on. <laughs> See, this is what we call jive. This man is a hustler. This man is a goddamn con man. People keep saying the man comes through. Yeah, he comes through hustling you. That's what he comes through doing. And we have to put an end to this Tariq Nashi guy. Jump on his ass. No pun intended. No homo, as they say. <laughs> uh, come on, now I got the strong internet. What's going on? Maybe I got a hit play. Walking cut. Walking down with the opposite sex of black and black. That's the moment you can do. White people don't do that. Yeah. Down to easy about other black people. Just like Lonnie Love. I'm gonna, you know, I don't speak for the black community, but I hold on. Just hold your goddamn horses for a minute, guys. <sighs> Wouldn't these white men who be having these plantation fetishes and they, what are you talking about? Okay. Let's just keep it real. Let's say, why don't you dress up like um Oh he You dig? <laughs> fly black women get chose on. If you fly, niggas fucking with you. Heavy. You dig? Plenty. I, I lived as a child. I lived in Leeds, Alabama, and I've talked about this before. I went to school with a bunch of little white supremacist hillbillies. I, you don't run from paparazzi that fast. What paparazzi? Nigga, there's a reason why they banned my ass from over there. Part of a radical group. I'm not a um, not a part of any kind of organization. I'm not a political figure. I'm a private citizen who's against you. And sweet ADOS, they're big on that shit. Talking that ally garbage. How we need some damn allies, white allies. They got this weird white. And please, send me. I saw some pictures of an ADOS meeting. It was a big old husky thing about the, the ADOS. One of their members was connected with the feds. We outed her ass and she got fired from her job. But you see, this is what this guy does. He likes the bullshit. He lies. We know who his family is all about. See, look at this as we've seen these pictures before. And obviously, in case you think that that's not her, Detroit, she's hugged up on her man. So if these people are opposed to white supremacy, we got to ask ourselves, how is it that they stumbled upon these spouses? But yet he talks about bed winches that his sister qualifies as a bed uh, winch. Does she not? This guy's a hypocrite. Can't stand him. This is him and his little tiny peanut. She had to be half white. And she got a all right, look, big ass forehead. <laughs> See, these people know what's going on. People have put this shit out there for years. If she 
see, she got her nose from her mother. If that had been a black nose, he'd have something to say about that. But since she has white in her, that white blood is valuable to these coons. So that's what he cherishes. And again, I know somebody just like this guy. They get with the white woman because they really worship the white. That's the truth. They can't admit it, but their actions say it. I keep telling you, who you marry, who you want to have kids with. Look at this woman. And her father is to blame, <laughs> too, because I personally, I can't get aroused by somebody looking like this. I'm going to be honest with you. I mean, <laughs> I don't know how her mother looked back in her younger days. <laughs> I love to see the pictures, but... Even she lost 75 pounds. Was she hot? I don't know with that skin tone. I don't know. I don't know. But you see the family photos. He likes to emphasize this daughter because she's the only one that's black. <laughs> and you see he keeps his big foreheaded sons with their uh, Buster Rhymes hairdos and shit. <laughs> Letting the hair run wild because he likes seeing that the white... Uh, Parts in the hair, big ass foreheads and shit. And his mother's short as fuck. But we're gonna get into who these other people are. Now I admit Peanut, she's cute. She got a fake ass and everything, but she's cute. Cute little thing. Yeah, Tariq now she's hidden colors. I think that's the joke that he loves coming up with because. Like a lot of people on YouTube, the young Pharaoh, I got, always talk about the house. Sign so it with the Benz and the BMW. It's like they do things to act like they're a champion or something, and then they title things or do things to throw it in your face to say, I'm dissing you, I'm playing you. It's kind of like in the Freemason way. Like uh, Sinetta made a video the other day getting his shoe shine. You know, if you can recall <laughs> throughout history in this country, being a shoe shine boy was a shameful thing for the black people. Now you got foreigners who took over that business. But whenever you see Sarnetta spending money, if you notice, he makes sure to spend it with everybody who is not black. And he shows you that. Just like this guy makes sure to hire people who are not foundational black Americans. How come he lets his kids' hair run wild? What kind of hairstyle is this? Yeah, peanut ain't bad. I guarantee you, you lock me up in a room with peanut for a half hour, I should change the locks in that motherfucking house. Ain't no doubt about that. <laughs> File for divorce, we'll split his goddamn money, and he'll be out of business. <laughs> Then he can go get himself an all white woman by saying, God damn, I got this. <laughs> but see, that's why he keeps her pregnant because when he goes out and does this thing, you can see the type of guy he is. Number one, he's an egomaniac. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I hear you, uh, Leonard. <laughs> he's an egomaniac. That's number one. And again, I hung with people like this. They marry because it looks good and they want people to see them as having a certain image and they want to lock down certain females. So they keep them pregnant so she could be preoccupied so she won't have time to cheat. Unless she's extremely freaky, of course, you know. <laughs> so he can run around doing what he has to do. Like keyboard musician used to point out when the man goes to his hotels, he acts like he's on a mission. And she's, you know, I think about 20 years younger than he is. So she's going to believe whatever he, he tells her. Oh, I'm on business. I'm setting up this. I'm setting up that. Oh, don't worry, baby. It's only going to be uh, one night. Yeah, man, I'm staying at the, uh, the Radisson or some shit like that. He goes meet the female, does what he does. I ain't going to go as far as to say he's meeting the male. I don't think he, you never know, but I'm just saying I ain't going that far. I ain't going to accuse nobody of that kind of thing. 
but I will put it out there. You know, you never know. But uh, <laughs> so uh, he can go live and say, "Oh, oh, oh, he's live." Uh, my baby, he Tariq, he's live. So yeah, he's not cheating. Well, you know that live has to go off at some point in time, right? <laughs> but funny part is the joke may be on him when he's away. Peanut may be the one going out cheating, inviting people over. Peanut can invite me over. <laughs> that's the best thing. Actually, that's the best thing for Peanut. When he goes out on his trips, she can come and have people come over so she can do what she has to do. Because <laughs> she knows when he's going to be away and for how long. And he's not going to care because his ego is so huge, he's going to think Peanut would never cheat on me. Because I'm Tariq Nashi. I do the cheating. Now, look at this. You know, I don't want to diss people's mother. Say, when that shit, they take the shit away. I don't want to diss people's mother. But, <laughs> I mean, you know, that's, that's, that's a, uh, that's a different look, you know what I mean? That's a different look. <laughs> Peanut can get these VC cups. <laughs> when children are little, you can kind of get away letting their hair long. I don't know, man. A lot of people like cut. I, I like cutting my son's hair, man. I ain't got time for all this this wild shit. People who have mixed people, mixed kids, they like letting the shit run wild because they want you to see, oh, it's not as nappy as you... Uh, Think it should be. <laughs> so that's it. That's her mother. Her face looks whiter hair. See, she's not ashamed. Hey, who's that in the background? I don't know. But <laughs> she's not ashamed uh, to be with them. So these pictures, my friend, let me see if this is his uh, Twitter or, or somebody else's. So you couldn't find any picture of my me with white family members, like the photos of you and your suspected white supremacist husband that lay up every night. So you decided to do crappy photoshopping pics. What's he talking about? Maybe this, I don't know if that's his. Well, it looks like it's his. Yeah, that's his. Oh, so he calls that he called that shit Photoshop. <laughs> I mean, they, these two look alike. That's obviously her mother. How are you gonna lie about that? So that brings me back to what I was about to say. Peanut's mother doesn't mind being with her family. He accepts her in public, but he doesn't show her on any of his media. When he does his family pics, he makes sure that she's not around. Because that's not a good look when you're supposed to be fighting white supremacy. <laughs> and this is what you got. White supremacy and your family. White blood and your sons. White supremacist sons. <laughs> you know? But see, this is hypocritical just like um, the Nation of Islam. Where they say Master Farad Muhammad is a black man. But his mother is white. But yet, his mother, white people are devils. But Master Farad Muhammad is not a devil. And he's not half devil. And you call him half devil, they say no. He's black. But he had to come into being half white in order to fool the people. And what I say, when I spoke to Eric Muhammad, he's not making that public because you know how I do. And it wasn't disrespectful, but I said, if he's God, why does God need to go undercover to try and trick his own creations? <laughs> that doesn't make any sense. There's no way he could have known about her white parent to his credit. Come on. He said he wanted mixed women on purpose. 
she's light. I'm sure she strikes me as an outgoing type who probably volunteered the information to him. My mom's white. She's, she doesn't hold her tongue. That's what I notice about her. Yvette Carnell, she insists that she's not biracial. And I think that's part of the reason why she lets her hair get uh, extra natural, so to speak. <laughs> you know, I think it's to uh, leave no doubt that she's black because I think if she bust her hair or straighten it, then she would look white, like I mentioned before. Since this is up here, I admit this queen is slim. I watched the movie. It was a foreign affair. This lady is a British Jamaican. But I got to admit, this lady did have a sexy ass body, though. I ain't going to tell you no lie. <laughs> that sex scene in the movie, I'm like, that shit was so unnecessary. But again, you got this. You got this famous picture. I had more pictures up there, but I guess they took it away. About to get into all that in a minute. Let me uh, segue into, oh, yeah. Just had to show the times that when I got up here, I mean, I'm not going to repeat that. You can go on these and see. I got up here. He gets me off real quick. Just wanted to show that, but I had to be reminded. Oh, yeah, here's him uh, doing a. What he's trying to be a rapper. <laughs> Ghetto Dynasty. <laughs> Mink Sly. You, you see, this goes to show that whatever works, he just wanted to be an entertainer, however it works. <laughs> oh, yeah, Yvette Carnell. Yeah, she has a white. Girlfriend, that's what Dr. Boyce Watkins, another primetime scammer, said. I think Wallace Ford, Ford was a small hat. I think so, too, because he has one of those phenotypes. But Tariq Nashi tried to be a gangster rapper with the look. That's why these rappers are so goddamn phony. Trying to look mean. He's just a guy out to get money and fame at any cost. Now, the reason why I had to go back to this video is because this is when I get at him on Instagram, which he blocked me, of course. I used this picture. He thought I was a female. He called me a uh, foreigner. But I used this pic because that's a Sudanese woman, Sudanese girl, with natural, almost straight hair. No weave, no wig. So let me just play this part, and this part will segue into the stronger parts. The parts I know that Nat Turner has been waiting for, and other people have been waiting for. <laughs> let me just play this scene real quick. And once we segue, I want you to pay, pay close attention to his neighbors. Yeah. Today, but look, we all suppose we deserve excellence. We deserve nice fly shit, black folks. Number one, this is our land. We're foundational black Americans. This is our country. This is our land. We built the wealth of this country. And black folks, we are going to have to start being self-dependent, meaning we're going to have to learn how to protect ourselves. Yeah. Yeah, this thing is getting real out here. Yeah, times are changing very, very fast. And I knew this whole shit was going down. When they start trying to make black people the face of COVID, I said, this shit is, they're about to start targeting us heavy. And they're going to use this COVID as their excuse. Somebody said it's heartbreaking. I don't even look at it as heartbreaking. Let's get the emotions out of it. I see a lot of black folks talking about how sad it is. It's gut-wrenching. It's heartbreaking. Get the fucking emotions. My 
white neighbors are out here having a little party. They're violating the social distancing order. I'm about to call Those are his black neighbors, neighbors that he says he has. Barbecuing and see what they do. Yeah. I guess that's the new style of black. out here having a little party they're violating the social distancing order i'm about to call the police and say it's a bunch of niggas over here now as you can see this guy trying to act like he hates his white people and his neighbors but he lives around you can't live around white supremacy and have them in your family but he says all his neighbors are black east indian black celebrities i mean <laughs> I, I'm trying to see the black faces. I, I can't see them. I just can't see them. And this is right out his window, but he's trying to convince us that he doesn't like the people he lives around. Now, you know damn well that this guy has been invited to a party, probably went to the party right after uh, he put this camera down <laughs> and bought a motherfucking uh, cake or a casserole over there, too. This guy's full of shit. You know, you don't live in a neighborhood like that and dismiss your neighbors. You know that. You know that shit, man. This is Tariq Nashi behind the con. Because he's a con man. But what he's really doing, he's trying to show off his neighborhood. That's what he's really trying to do. So with that, let me segue into this. Here, man, why is this shit over this? Well, here is his uh, home. This is all public record, by the way, just in case people uh, think that something is invading people's privacy. This is all on the public record. Chatsworth, California. So he had to look high and low to find this place for this pretty decent price as far as the Los Angeles area is concerned. Uh, $1.3 million, that's what it closed for, as you can see right here. Uh, annual taxes on here as of 2008. Almost 12,000 bucks. So that's why when you buy certain things, you got to keep it up. That's why he has to keep the con going. Even if, let's say he paid for the shit in full, the taxes cost a lot of money. So that's why even when you get a lot of shit, you still got to pay for the taxes. You got to pay for the upkeep, the electric bill, heating bill, water bill. Gardner, <laughs> you hear how he has the Mexican. He doesn't call them white Latinos, I noticed. Mexican gardeners and all that shit, upkeep. We can estimate. Then, you know, entertainment. Gotta be around. I'll be conservative. Let's say 30000 a year just to upkeep the house. And that... It's not even including some emergency situations that might go down. Either her half-white genes dominated his, his with the boys, or he has recent white lineage in him as well. Well, her mother is very white, though. <laughs> he puts extra miracle whip on his burgers. <laughs> yeah, he living a ghetto, fabulous life. Do you believe he has investment properties elsewhere, as he claims? Well, he's supposed to have that Haitian apartment building, which obviously he doesn't. He lied. Sounds like a struggle mansion to me. <laughs> but you see, rental properties, you could. Chatsworth was known for being the porn capital of California. That might explain the home discount. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, yeah California is known for that porn shit. Now you see, you look around the neighborhood. Ronald Reagan Freeway. Got a school around the way. Then I guess this must be the spot he goes to when he does his shopping, when he uh, did that uh, 
the cookout that time? <laughs> well, as far as go Bank of America, and I gotta tell people this is the danger about the internet, though. Man. This is what I don't I don't like. Because you could be from anywhere in the world and check out people's hood. Then of course we know Google Streets and shit. You can actually get the actual shit. That's not good, man. If you're a guy who is uh looking to get at somebody, <laughs> you know, you can survey the area and shit. You know what I mean? That, that's not cool. But it is what it is. And I have seen a Google, what is that? That Google streets uh car running around and everybody was staring because we're like okay that's how they do it i don't like that shit i'm gonna be honest with you <laughs> so here's this uh property as you know a lot of people oh well street view right here uh not available for this home ah <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if he put in a request. <laughs> he bought the house of Bussy Juice all over. Yeah, I guess if it's uh, porno, shit. Ho hopefully he didn't uh, take the furniture, you know? <laughs> shoot pornos. You know how they do on pornos, man. You watch a few pornos. I'm like, man, they be fucking up some real, really nice furniture and shit. I'm like, damn. Put some plastic over that shit or something. <laughs> I mean, damn. Because I'm like, I was watching one. I said they got they had the very nice sofa set. I said that shit is nice. And then they got people busting all over it and shit. I said, oh, fuck. Teach me a lesson. I, one thing I from watching porn, I learned. Don't buy used sofas. I know back my mother <laughs> would buy one. And other people she knew they would buy one. Don't buy the used sofas. And when it comes to used cars, I know. Whew, they could be bargains, but shit, man, if you're going to buy a used car, man, first thing you got to do, you got to disinfect that shit inside totally. And if you got cloth seats, whew, I, I don't know what you could do, man, but <laughs> I seen this porno, this guy is a disgusting guy. He go, He's out in Detroit. He was uh, getting the hookers and hitting them raw, and he only lasts like one minute, for real. I thought that shit was weird. He's, he's, I don't know if it's a comedy or the guy has mental defects, but he'll say, oh, I'm about to tear this pussy up. Then he'll put his penis in there. Then he's like, this is some good pussy. And literally, and it's no lie, no exaggeration, literally, 60 seconds later, literally, he's done. <laughs> I mean, it's just crazy. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. And he pays them like 12 bucks and then tries to shortchange them. They ask for extra $2 to be on camera. Then he tries to shortchange them on the $2. I'm like, shit, what the fuck is 12 bucks? <laughs> so anyway, let me get to this. So in the grand scheme of things, you know, this is a nice place. You know, you can't deny a sizable house, you know. You know, uh, grass needs to be uh, kept, you know. But overall, if you ask most people, would you like to live here? I'm sure 100% of people will say, I'll take it. So that's not a bad thing. We've all seen uh, parts of his home in videos because he likes to show them off so you can kind of make out everything. Now, I will admit, if this is the front, this part I didn't see. I saw that part, that side entrance part. That was the main part I saw. Yeah, this is it right here, this one. I saw him with that. So... <laughs> this guy's name. Oh, we're about to get into that right now, Narco. Right after I hit this up, we segue in, into that right now. Nice entrance. Doesn't keep the grounds up as 
dare I say white people would, but <laughs> you know, it's that nigga shit. But I know when he's listening right now, I know he's going to say, listen, you can't afford it. Stop hating. Niggas always got to hate on something. And you know how that goes. This is nice. Nice little hangout. Looks like a fireplace on the outside. I think he did a thing from that. See, with homes like these, man, you got to have your security right, man. Because <laughs> people can come in from all angles. This is why you know he's not afraid of white supremacy. You know? <laughs> what kind of site? This is a red fin. I think this is a real estate site. You know, a lot of times you put in addresses, you can see these real estate sites pop up. You can see it all. Edex says, I can afford it, but I'll be struggling like him, though, to keep it up. Yeah, see, the upkeep, that's what a lot of people don't factor. It's just like when a lot of black people buy used luxury cars. You know, you might be able to afford to pay for the car, but are you really thinking about the upkeep? That's what you got to uh, keep that in mind, because you, you got to pay for the expensive gas, <laughs> even if you don't want to. Well, some people, you know how it is. Some people are like, fuck it, I'm going to pay for whatever the fuck I, I, can, I can get or I choose to get. But if you want to keep the car, keep it running, right, you got to do as the manufacturer says. And then, of course, when it's time to change brakes, unless you do it yourself, but a lot of people, they get a luxury car. They're like, fuck that. I ain't trying to change no brake myself. I got to pay somebody to do it because I got a luxury car. Oh, yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah, that outside is it. See, this is the side part, this little side part with the gate. That's where you would have his cars at in this garage, and then you got the front part right here, which is the part I, I admit I never saw that part. See, from this angle, the shit looks corny to me, but from, like, this angle, that angle, then, you know, it's cool. It's nice. Now you got the interior. Nice interior, you know. I remember when he had this his last live, and that girl was showing her apartment. He was preparing, he's calling her shit ghetto and possibly ghetto. And then he, she sold the shit. The shit was nice. He couldn't say nothing about that. So, why he brought, what's the next one? Like, luckily, the broad, be broadcast of the live that cut out. <laughs> so. That's the way the man is with that when it comes to that. But that kitchen is nice, big, sizable, but they treat it in a ghetto style fashion. But again, it's not my duty to tell people how to live. They live how they live. But the main thing is he doesn't seem to be concerned about security. And it was nicer looking before they moved in than it was atrocious after they moved in. This is the bad part about getting homes and stuff. And then people knowing where you live at. <laughs> they get the whole layout of, sh of the shit, of the interior. You can never step foot in the shit. You can just step foot into the house, all from home, all from all the way across the country and shit. <laughs> you know? And then you combine his videos with this layout. You can map the whole shit out. And then, you know, the Google, is that shit, the satellite uh, shit? See, so this, this is how you know he's not afraid of uh, a white supremacist assault or an assault team coming to him. Because I can play in all this shit out and map the whole home out. <laughs> but you mean to tell me a team of white supremacist hitmen can't do it? Come on. Nice. I don't know if he kept those sofas and all that. It's nice. See, me personally, even, you know, people in certain areas, neighborhoods, they feel more secure because they figure, well, there's hardly going to be a break in, but people do burglarize rich areas. Some people know how to do it, and you know, it's usually white people. <laughs> So these 
I'm not big on glass sliding doors, man, on ground level. I'm just not big on that. Upper floors, I don't mind, but that ground shit, that's just too easy. They may look impressive, but when it comes to force entry, <laughs> I'm just not down with that. But a lot of people, they trust the shit because of the neighborhood. So you got a lot of different spots to go in. But see, obviously, when he does this thing, it doesn't look quite as nice as this demonstration. Now, as you can see, the easy way to map this out, you can see from this door right here, this is that, that corner door right here. So that's kind of easy to map out. I feel like I live here now. <laughs> so that's easy to map out. So that's the pro that's the problem about this this internet shit, man. They make shit too easy. Then it's upstairs. Edex said I stay there. I'd be having to have mortgage parties and everything just to stay there. <laughs> How to use the planetary alignments and dates for rituals? We all got that power. So it's nice, definitely nice place. As you can see, when you got places like this, you got a, a lot of people might furnish a smaller house, cost more to furnish the shit, you know? So I've been in mansions before. I'm tall, so I'm not, uh, Tariq Nasheed is tall too, but I'm just not big on, on these railings. I need something else going. Because I know when growing up, I get into fights with my siblings and shit. If we lived in some shit like this, I, I can almost guarantee somebody would have been thrown off the balcony and shit. <laughs> and more likely than not, probably would have been me. But because I was the youngest. So <laughs> the fights we had, I know everybody else had some fights too. So that's nice. I, I, I'm not going to say it's not a nice place. I think he showed this before. You know, it's a good place you got. Uh, and he went on this balcony before showing that off. Yeah, he's showing it off. The reason why I say showing it off because he doesn't have to do it like that. He could do it the way Tommy Sotomayor does it and has a, have a dedicated room, even though he has his little uh, room for his little official YouTube broadcast, but all the other stuff he doesn't have to show off. But Tommy does it because I guess he's trying to be like him and show off. But all the YouTubers who are making money off of people, they want to throw it back in your face, you know? Excuse me. You see what happened to Pop Smoke up in the hills out in Cali? At least he has more cameras than Ring. Bank Search says his net worth is approximately $3 million. Even half that. Why is he always taking donations and hawking products to afford this place? That's what Keyboard Musician says, and I believe it. You saw the taxes. as of, That's as of 2008. Nice bathroom, sit down shit for women who like to do their makeup and stuff. And see all these lights, that shit costs money. Bathtub, now I know damn well Tariq now she can't fit in that shit. <laughs> shit. I know I can't either. That shit is too damn tight. What I need, shit, I would need one of those Scarface type of bathtubs. But damn, see, if you got some shit like that, that Scarface shit, <laughs> then you got to pay people to clean that shit because that shit would be so fucking big for a tub. That's big. That's nice. So you got your you got your shit. So Tariq Nasheed, I know you're listening. I know you, you're going to watch it. You're going to say you ain't watching it. So I'm giving you props on the home. The home is a nice home. Uh, Got a lot of shit to uh, store. So I know why you have to hustle. You got to keep this shit up. You know, <laughs> that's why he's always at the pool to pay. <laughs> Did he get his place at a foreclosure auction? He could have been because, you know, the price. I consider this to be a cheap price because L.A. is supposed to be very expensive. L.A. area is supposed to be very expensive. So one point three million. You know, I'm sure it took him a while to look forward and get that right situation, because if you have a few million dollars to your name, that's not a bad, that's not a bad deal, you know, but a lot of people, what they do, they like to buy big homes and try to find places where the taxes are extremely low. That's the smart thing to do. 
Uh, yeah, nice bathroom. Guess that's a guest house bathroom. It might be the guest uh, bedroom. So again, I was a guest at a buddy's friend's mansion, and uh, she had us stay in a guest room. And that guest bedroom looked like whew, looked like uh, somebody's master bedroom in a regular house. That was in uh, South Jersey. I saw another video that left no doubt I can forward it to you. Okay. <laughs> I wouldn't even want to stay in LA or any of the surrounding 500 median areas unless I'm earning at least 600000 Well, shit, you got to, but see, people like him might spend too much. But obviously, I, I, you would hope that he wouldn't make the mistake of trying to get some shit that, you know, he's having a problem to afford. But if worse came to worse, he or Peanut could work a. 40000 hopefully a $50,000 a year job, offset the taxes, because a lot of people do that. If they lose a job or shit goes bad or they get demoted, some shit like that, they don't want to lose their house, so they will work wherever the hell they got to work at to make sure they keep that shit. That's it, even if it's not even paid off, let alone if it's paid off. Look up the tax record on that place. I want to say he got a Got it as a bank REO for 700K. Homes are sold because who can continue to pay to stay in these homes? Hey, you never know. I'm sure he got a bargain. Even at 1.3 million, I would call that a bargain to a degree. But it depends on what else is around there. I don't know the nearest, uh, if there's a bad hood close by because a lot of rich places, there's usually a bad hood nearby. <laughs> That's his backyard he's usually chilling from, bad grass. But see, if he's concerned about white supremacy, they can come from all angles. I mean, you saw how they did Scarface. <laughs> bad grass, he needs uh, people to take care of that. But that, that's pretty a big, pretty big yard because you don't even see the pool here. So that's a big yard. But again, it's a place where white supremacists can lurk and, and get busy. So they say it sold at 1.3 million. That's what they say. Oh, this is built in 2001. Okay. So it's not that old. And they say, according to this site, they say it's worth now 1.5. It appreciated since it was sold. Okay, maybe he bought it in 2016, I guess. It's worth more now, which it would be. Uh, again, he said his neighbors were mostly black, East Indian, all that kind of shit, but obviously he's lying. Let's just look up this shit. Six bathrooms, full bathrooms, they say. Two main bedrooms on one level, one bedroom on another. It's probably where Peanut's mother stays. <laughs> Family room, master bedroom, fireplace, four garages. Part of the association fee. Homeowners Association fee. Curbs. School District. Los Angeles Unified. No common walls. Has a view. Blah, blah, blah. At least consider. Huh? Oh, we didn't even consider that. But it's old. It's, they said it's old. <clears throat> oh. Damn, they even had this shit on here. <laughs> Listed, active, contingent, active under contract. I mean, if we, I really want to search, we can always find who owns the house, though. You know that. Delisted, active. Damn, 2009? Shit. Sold at 928000 That's a bargain. <laughs> 
wonder if that was before these uh, improvements. Let's see, schools, you got schools around. Forgot there was another site that would show you the crime in the area and the number of molesters, sex offenders. Chatsworth real estate sales last 30 days. Median median price 600 700,000. Probably not the ritziest place, but it ain't bad either. I know I, I know when I said that I know he's like, yeah, it's still on Vanessa. We really going in. This is behind the con. You're listening to behind the con with Alquan. See these other properties are like that. Now, I don't live in a place, but I live near places with property that costs a whole lot more than this. And that ain't no lie. <laughs> but I ain't bragging because I don't live in those places. But my place ain't bad either. But <clears throat> now, we got that out of the way. I try to find celebrities that live there, but I could find no black people and no major celebrity. Let's look at, so I got this coming next. So stay tuned, stay tuned. Chatsworth, this is always confusing about Los Angeles area because they call it Chatsworth. I guess that's a neighborhood in the actual city of Los Angeles. I thought it was a separate uh, town. So it is, it says Los Angeles City, Los Angeles County. Okay, separate town, separate hood in Los Angeles. Let's see. You know, damn well, I don't know nothing about that. So, The main thing I was trying to find is this. There's about 35,000 people in the neighborhood. And it says among the lowest population densities for both the city and the county of Los Angeles. 2008, they estimated the population 37,000 increase. Median age was 40. Considered old for city and county neighborhoods, the percentages of residents age 35 and older were among the city's highest. The neighborhood was considered to be ethnically, ethnically moderately <laughs> diverse <laughs> uh, for, more, for both the city of Los Angeles and its county, with a relatively high percentage of whites and Asians, which is usually the case because, as I always say, that Asians live in white hoods of the middle class to the high class. And that will include some East Indians and a sizable Hispanic Latino community. I wonder where they live at. I wonder if they live in the outhouse. Let me stop. <laughs> so the breakdown, 65.7% white, 14.4% Asian. So we're looking at 80%, no, yeah, 80% Asian and white, or white and Asian. 13% Latinos, I don't know where that's coming from. Must be on the outskirts related to some other kind of hood <laughs> that it's leading into. <laughs> Blacks, 2.2%. But he says his neighbors are black and East Indian. Then others, Korea, I don't know why they didn't group them in with Asians, Philippines. But see, again, this uh, once again shows what I've been saying all along when it comes to white hoods with money. Asians cannot be our allies and others aren't into that hating the white man and and whites are keeping us down shit because they live in the white hoods. Because of that, there's no incentive for them to dislike the white man. <laughs> Why would you? If you're doing well, you can come to this country and do well. Whenever you 
come here, you, you get a TV special. If they're involved in crime, they say, oh, they came here as an immigrant, built it up, and uh, came in, and they're living well. They get positive press. We get negative press. So that's why he's proud to live where he's at, and that's fine. He can be proud. But don't be proud when you're scamming and scheming and tricking the people to get this money. So the median, median income, 85000 They say it's considered high for the city. The percentages of families that earn more than 40000 was considered high for the county. Renters occupy 28.9% of the housing stock. Those might be the Latinos <laughs> and a few of the Koreans and the Filipinos. I'm just going by, you know, how that is. <laughs> And in-house or apartment owners held at, held 71%. The average household size was 2.6 people was considered average for Los Angeles. In 2000, there were military veterans, 10% of the population, blah, blah, blah. So he lied. Of course, you know that that's a mostly white hood. I, that's why I showed the video earlier. So when I got to this point, <laughs> you could see that his neighbors are not black like he keeps claiming. He says he lives around black celebrities. Where are they at? Seems to be a ghetto mansion neighborhood section. <laughs> Believe it or not, they have those places. That's why, you know, I was like, okay, let me see. So usually when there's a school right near you and the freeway right here, it's a little more urbanized, you know what I mean? And I don't want to say ghetto because, you know, you can never call that. Then you got the shopping center nearby. That's a very big shopping center. Walmart. Yeah, that's where he went at before when he was having that little cookout party. And he went he went there to uh, go shopping. Yeah, I, I follow the videos. I, and you, you can listen. I don't care about that, Tariq Nasheed. I follow the videos. I pay attention. So this is where he was at at that time. And he said, when he did that, if you recall, when he made that video, he said there was a lot of white people. He was looking at white people and how they were looking at him and treating them in the store. He was like, well, I live around, I live around a lot of white people. So, but yet he says he lives around a lot of white people. Then he says, my neighbors are black. A lot of black people, a lot of black actors. Seems like the only black actor that lives there is him. So you got a lot of shopping center here. And these look like probably either smaller houses or apartment complexes. LA Fire Department. Outpost. LA is a big ass, sprawling ass city. <laughs> I was looking up. I see these a lot of apartments or houses, it's hard to tell like this, but I was looking up um, I found, let me see what else if they get a street view on this. I was saying that there are cities that are larger than LA and New York by land area. You know, I bought me a thing of Starbucks coffee. I like drinking it from the shop, but when I made that shit at home, man, I, I swear to you, I don't give a damn how prestigious Starbucks is supposed to be. I prefer that Folgers Gourmet Roast. That just has a better taste to me. <laughs> I might throw that Starbucks shit out. Anyway, I got to that point to get to this next point. Why would anybody take Tariq seriously? I guess he reels them in with the jokes and he tries to act like he really cares. But that's why I always say, look at who they marry. Look into the personal lives. That's why you got to look behind the con. Once you look behind the con, then you get a better idea of, of who this person really is. And as a matter of fact, that's a perfect segue <laughs> to where I'm going next. Because now we're about to get into a better idea of what this person is all about. Now, keep in mind, this is public information. 
got to keep that in mind because I know he'll try to take this down, but this is public information. It's not, not privacy. This is public information. Somebody, as you can see, benverified.com. A loyal viewer paid their money to furnish this report on Tariq A. The A is for Allah. Nashi. As you can see, this was generated September 19th of this year. So this is very recent. Uh oh, please remember you're restricted to use this information for. You may not use this information for evaluating a person for. Okay. Oh, they just want this. Is, I guess this is the same thing that Jaws must use too. Whole lot of house to clean and maintain. Maintain. That's the thing. I never see them with housekeepers. Looks like his wife is the one cleaning and cooking and all that kind of stuff. You can't do all that the way you used to do it in a small apartment or something. But anyway, this is what we needed. It provides us with a whole lot of answers. A whole lot of answers on, on to who this guy is. Now, I know this man is not trying to do it. And I like to think, uh, I don't want to say the name, but I'll say Linda for the uh, cash app. Happened to be on my phone because I got to do it this way. So right now, what we're going to do, we're going to evaluate this. And once again, this is... Public record, public material. It's not nothing that's private or secret. Anybody can just get this and uh, check you out. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that's the way it goes. Um, so we're going to dig deep into this and I'm going to scrutinize it now. Everything that's here, because I looked this thing over and we see a lot of aliases, as you saw with his websites and stuff. And I know he's going to hate on this right now. I know he's going to hate on it. But then again, he can't hate on it because he claims that he doesn't watch other people's videos. <laughs> so <laughs> it's going to be hard for him to hate and make this claim that he saw this without giving it away. But anyway, here we go. As you can see, table of contents, they, they have a... a let me get rid of this. They have a strong background, bankruptcies, every damn thing. Here we go. Tariq A. Nashi, Chatsworth, California, age 50. That's what it says here. We'll take them at his word that he's 50 years old. We knew he was at least that. Some people have estimated up to 55, but we knew that Peanut was old enough to be his firstborn daughter or something, you know? <laughs> As you can see, 19,775 Tremel Lane, Chatsworth, California. And as you can see, 19,775 Tremel Lane, Tremel Lane, Chatsworth, California. So there's no doubt that the information contained in this report is indeed authentic. I know some people might say, well, you can still fake it. Well, this would be a whole lot of faking that somebody sent to me, a whole lot of faking. But there's a company name that is uh, on this report. I looked into the place. The company is a real company. This would be pr a pretty time consuming and expensive fraudulent document you know there are people who have uh they'll create some fake shit but i don't think the average person has time to do all this shit <laughs> so with that let's get into this we're looking at aliases these are some weird a aliases i'm looking at right now monet pierce Tariq A. Nasheed, Tariq Nasheed, Tariq Nasheed, T. Nasheed, 
Hashi Tariq. <laughs> That's the usual fake names that people do. They reverse the names. Tariq Allah Nasheed, Tina Nasheed, Ahmed Nasheed, Latanya Pierce. Now you ask this. I know a lot of people, we know the answer, a lot of us. How in the hell do they know that these are his aliases? Well, I'll tell you this. If you've ever looked up your credit report, you'll see a lot of your aliases that you've used. And they track that either through your social security number, magazines that you may have subscribed to, and chasing it through your addresses, and they just follow you around. Because I think, I know when I was a teen, I would get these magazines. You know how they, they would, used to send magazine things in the uh, mail? Uh, you know, you fill out the postcard, get this magazine, we'll bill you. <laughs> you know, I used to make up a name, have them send the magazines, get about, what, three months worth? Never pay the shit. And shit like that would build up as an alias. And I think they let that follow you because they know, even though it was petty, you weren't really doing no bank robberies and shit like that. They know that you intended to do that. You intended to give a fake name, you know? So as you can see, these different aliases, there's no doubt about the fact that these were intentional. Now this Monet Pierce shit <laughs> and this Tina and this Latanya, I mean, <laughs> I don't know about that. And maybe, maybe that could be his daughter, but would she be pulling these different names? I don't know, but Tariq Nasheed, that's what they have on the report. Now, what I can't understand, I'm trying to figure out which one of these people would be his real name. We can't ascertain that, but we know damn well there are no Tariq Nasheeds being from Alabama, because that's not a part of Alabama culture. You know that shit. You know, there ain't no big Muslim community in Alabama. They're Baptists. Come on. Yep, hiding in plain sight. And his name is Tariq Allah Nashi, which tells me that that's a fucking made up name. How the fuck is your middle name going to be Allah? And as you can see from these aliases, it was intentional. But like other people pointed out, as well as the people who sent me the information, that this can't be his real name. The FBI must be hiding this man's identity, true identity, because he's a coon agent. Oh, we're going to get into that Marcus stuff in a second. Because I think that Marcus the story fits. But I thought that this would actually tie it together strongly, but it ties together in a good way. But we still see the background info. Because now we got these numbers. Hey, it's all... I don't know how to block it, but <laughs> I'll do that. Okay, Tariq Nasheed, I'm respecting... Your privacy on that. All right, Mr. Nashi. You see how nice I am? <laughs> that was emails. Those are emails. People can do what the hell they want to do with that <laughs> in my uh, situation. But they said this is his best match personal email, all Gmail. Tons of emails. Monet Pierce at Yahoo. I wonder what's up with that. <laughs> he claims to be an ordained minister so he can travel overseas and conduct business. Yep. I wonder what's up with that. Monet Pierce, he's female. Male.ton2. At Yahoo. I don't know what that is. Tariq818 at AOL. I think that's an address I remember him using. They got the shit on this guy. I tell you. That's why it's scary out here, man. But the fact that his real name is being hidden, hidden 
That's a problem. That means he's being backed by somebody. That's why they never mention his white family members when he's on TV. Because they're hiding this man and his true identity. He's a coon agent. Current address, best match. Uh, This man has been all over the goddamn place. You see, Texas, he never mentioned Texas. But Matter of fact, you know what? Since we already are into this, let me go all the way in. Since we're going to do it, check it for the people. So this is Lancaster, California. Let's see what kind of place this is. Well, not a mansion, but... One of these kind of hoods. Because that's not too bad. Let's see the. Uh... Let's see what we're dealing with here. Damn, that's a big difference in kitchen. Now, if I would have bought a house like this, I would have would have torn that whole kitchen out. I just don't like that look. That's me. <laughs> yeah, that's ugly. I see why he had to move on that one. Oh, yeah. Big difference. <laughs> Probably rented the place. This is horrible. Horrible condition, as far as I'm concerned. Oh, yeah, that's bad. That's bad. <laughs> so let's get this one. Uh oh, it's an apartment on this one. This is 2005. Now, I know Tariq Nashi doesn't like people going in like this, but we're going in. We're going in. North Hollywood. Let's see what kind of area this is. <clears throat> God damn. The fuck? Is this shit right? <laughs> now renting. This is a fucking motel. So I don't like this kind of California architecture. That's the kind of thing that kind of turns me off. I don't like that kind of architecture. I guess I'm not used to it. You know what I mean? I hope it's this and not across the street. <laughs> you know? I hope it's this. Because if it's this, god damn. Well, I'll say he came up. Now you see why he has to scam. He doesn't want to go back to this kind of shit. Let's see. This shit... Damn, it was this. God damn. Holy shit. Damn. You can see that used to be a fucking motel. God damn. Yeah, that's that kind of California architecture I don't like. But this is the whole property. Okay, here's an interior shot. That's that 1970s color. 60s and 70s, what do they call that shit? Avocado green. <laughs> Yikes. It actually looks all right with the white trim, but... Shit. Let's see, for a big shot... That's not how a big shot's supposed to be living. So that was the apartment 8X, North Hollywood, California. Last seen 2005. My man lived in more places than I ever lived. Shit. <laughs> I thought this part was going to be a quick part. But you know me, I got I to gotta actually see what these places look like. All right, no street view. I guess that'll be it right here. What the fuck? I heard of this Woodley Hotel. I heard of this shit. I forgot somebody, somebody famous got killed here. I heard of that shit. I forgot what it was all about. God damn. This is in Van Nuys, California. Come on. Where's the shit at?
My, my, my. Now you see why the scam has to take place. And you see why he's not stopping. My man ain't trying to go back to this kind of shit. Uh, I hate to say it, but I don't blame him. <laughs> Damn. This is when he had uh, he had his art of macking books and all that kind of shit. See, scamming is, is apparently paying the bills better than uh, macking. And I wonder, I don't know, maybe other people could help me out. Maybe he didn't have a uh, peanut with him at the time. Because <laughs> these, these places look like bachelor pads. Yeah, this is why he said, I got to make it in Hollywood. Fuck that. So that sucks. Now we're going into 1999. Let's see. See, California, LA area, man, it's one of those places. If you got money, you could live in some nice shit. If you don't have money, you could live in some bullshit, <laughs> you know? It's just crazy. Okay, this is the, let's see. Like I said, this is the danger of the internet, shit like this. Yeah, that's definitely some semi-hood shit right here. And this is how the uh, Google Maps, so I think the military, yeah, no, nah, this looks like Google Maps right here. Yep, Google Maps. That's how they do it, man. They go on every fucking street. <laughs> That's why this shit is dangerous, man. I don't like it. See, this lady, she spotted the Google Maps truck or car. She's like, let me see what this is all about. And I don't know how they blur out plates and shit. I guess the algorithm rhythms must be really good, man. <laughs> My man said, damn, Tariq, fuck it. Keep hustling, homie. <laughs> hey, man, we just got to put it out there. That's bad, man. That's bad. And we're going to find out if there were evictions or not. Or if you just got tired. I'm trying to uh, find an interior shot. I know that's someplace else. Uh, I, I guess it's a similar uh, thing. So let's see. For bachelor spot. If you just need a decent place to live, I guess that's all right. But it's not a superstar's place. Well, I mean, I never saw, uh, uh, I didn't even check the price on these, but I never saw them put that kind of tile in a uh, bath uh, room before. Guess that, that'll help cover up a lot of ground easier and make it look semi-fancy. I don't see where the shower uh, curtain goes. Of course, that's not what this is about. I'm not critiquing it like that. <laughs> Just trying to see the, I like to see the options that people go through when you want to rent places out. The floorboards need some uh, redoing. But again, a lot of these places, these are for starving artists like uh, Tariq Nashi when they get to the LA area. They need a place to stay. Now, I, I don't, you know, the man had a dream. You go to Los Angeles, you want to make something. And then you start living in crummy places like this. I can understand it. Oh, it's just cheap tile. You know, I'm the expert in residential remodeling. <laughs> yep, cheap tile to cover ground, right? Without So they can put that shit in quick. So I guess... Trying to see what the rent was. Can't see. Can't see what that is. I ain't gonna spend too much time on that. We got the gist of that shit. Let's go to the next one. I mean, this is a this is a hell of a lot of uh different spots, man. I'm telling you. I guess that's where all these different aliases start coming into play. 
<laughs> this is also in Van Nuys, California. <laughs> no man, not she. Yikes. So I don't like these kind of places, man. This is that California look. With that, I mean, it probably is what I think it is. It looked like a uh, former motel. That's just me. I, I'm just not cool with that look. And that's the kind of look. I know my man was in Arizona. That guy that played on Hogan's Hero, he died in a place looking similar to that. Yeah, see, I'm not down with this architecture, man. <laughs> Damn. So the Mac was living like that. The big baller was living like this. Shit. I'm almost starting to feel bad for the guy now. Shit. <laughs> Fuck. Not too bad because you're scamming the people, so I'm not feeling too bad. Let me just see if I can get a, those are warehouses that are repurposed. Oh, okay. Get an idea of the interior. I mean, it probably didn't look like this when he had it, though. Come on, where's the thing at? Yeah, I mean, that's what you expect. Small place to stay until you... Uh... Now, if I had to look at this history of his, that place looked like it smelled like crap. He claims to be a crip. <laughs> if I had to look, I, I could piece this history of his together, like uh, Trip said, evictions and moving place to place because he's trying to get the finances and shit together. Or you can say, well, maybe he, he was, oh my God, please tell me no. Please tell me no. Damn. No wonder why he's so fucking arrogant and bragging about his shit now. This is why he's so proud and arrogant. God damn. And this is why he stays scamming. So you don't want to go back to this kind of shit. Damn. Yeah, and he claimed to be a pimp and a Mac. God damn. Let me get my tissue. Because I'm starting to feel sorry for the man now. <laughs> shit. Except for the scam of the people part. Let me see if I can find an interior shot. This place may be so crummy. They may not have an a interior shot. <laughs> this is one of those uh, places they try to trap you with. Come look at it. You'll love it. <laughs> what does the shit look like, man? <laughs> You'll love it. Trust me. So we get the idea. He was living in a, uh, probably in the back of a, Storefront, or maybe he could have had a store temporarily and lived in that, like uh, Master P did. Now, we're talking Alabama now. So that was 1998. So he moved from, uh, he was in Alabama in 1998. They moved to Winnetka, California in 1998, too. So let's see what's up with that. Alabama. Well, that look, I, I'll take that over the previous place in California. Shit. <laughs> oh, shit. He was a true starving con artist. That's exactly what it looks like. Shit. This is better than that. Winnetka, California, living on that storefront. So I ain't going to hate on this one. Oh, so this was the actual spot. Damn. Hold on, let me get the... Uh, get the other view. 
Oh, I guess that's it. Shit. Damn. <laughs> and they got the nerve to put that picture there instead of just repairing that shit. See, if that was my house, I'm trying to sell this shit. I don't know what houses go for in Alabama, but goddamn. Put down some cheap floor and a fucking bucket of paint. Let you get more money out of the shit. Some people are cheap. So I don't like. I don't know. It's just me. I don't feel secure and shit like this. I'm going to be honest with you. <laughs> I feel like if I go to work, I'm going to be ripped off <laughs> when I come home. <laughs> That's enough of that. Let me get to uh, Irving, Texas. Uh oh. You know, that's one of my spots I like talking about. JFK situation. See, he never really mentions his Texas uh, situation. Uh oh. You see how, you see what the hell just came up? Tariq Omari Nasheed in Irving, Texas, real estate agent. Let's see. God damn. I wonder, I wonder, could this be a mistaken thing here? Oh, that's a law firm. That's not that. But that alias didn't come up on his report. Tariq, Tariq Omari Nasheed. Let's see if that's the apartment. 2938. 2938. <laughs> Let's see. Apartment 3147. Yep, 3147. He ain't talking about being a real estate agent. <laughs> yeah, I ran out of Texas. He don't talk about it, but the real G's got to him. Damn. Licensed real estate sales agent living. Yeah, for a guy looking to get rich, real estate is usually what a lot of people get into. Total experience of five years. Damn. But Tariq Omari Nasheed? So now we got clues on to his name. If his name was truly Tariq Allah Nasheed, that's what it would be right here. You can't just change your middle name. Well, you can, but you know what I mean. You're going to change your middle name. You're going to change the whole shit. Current status is current and active and address listed on. There would be the license will expire. Oh, okay. Well, here's the phone number. It might be a different person. I'll give them that benefit of the doubt unless there's some really slick shit going on. Uh, here's an email, tnashi at gmail. Hmm, what's going on, Verla? Maybe this is. Remember, somebody said he had real estate properties. <laughs> you remember that? Ah, uh, shit. So, by accident, I may have discovered something. T Nasheed at Gmail. Let's go back to his email addresses that he used. T Nasheed01. T Nasheed at Gmail. Uh oh. It looks like that's him. So, Tariq, so everybody listening, Tariq Omari Nasheed. That's another alias, but it wasn't listed on the report, but it just popped up right here. Be even nicer if we could find a uh, picture of the guy. <laughs> Let's see. As you can see, oh, that's other real estate agents living in the area. Oh, he better be lucky there are no pictures. <laughs> What's going on, Boris? Uh, you got to be some kind of agent. All these aliases and covers. Uh, let's see. Okay, I guess they don't want to show what that looks like. Let me see the street side. Uh, 
That looks better. You know what? Because, I, you know, I've been to Texas and Irving, Texas. God damn it. Yeah, I remember those roads in Texas, boy. This could have been one of the places I checked out. Yeah, I think so. I wonder if the, is the airport by here? I ain't gonna go deep into that, but my man left out his Texas exploits. Uh oh, now he was in Chatsworth, California. They don't have a date on this. But another thing to agent status is all this moving around. You remember when I tell people about the JFK assassination? How I tell people that Coon, or not Coon agents, but agents are always moving around. And this is an unusual amount of moving for one man. Very unusual. So this is Chatsworth, California. Very, a lot of varied uh, properties and shit. Very places. This is better. I, I, you know, I, I could deal with that. <laughs> you know? I don't like that shit across the street. So this is the kind of neighbor that people say, man, get your shit together. Tearing up, you're bringing our property values down. <laughs> but I can get with this. Let's see what it looks like on the inside. All right. Yeah, I can get with that. But I find it weird that he would go from a place looking like this to some weird ass places that I wouldn't want to step foot in. We get that? That ain't that ain't bad. Let's get with this. Now he's back. See Texas, California. That's a lot of long distance traveling. California, Texas, Texas, California. Oh, even the Mississippi address. Alabama. Sound like some agent training shit. That's what it does sound like. And this is in Coppell, Texas. What the hell? Now, come on. We saw the other places. <laughs> How the fuck? How you go from shit looking like this in that other place in Chatsworth to those crummy shits that he was in. I know California and LA area is supposed to be more expensive. Nah, something's wrong. Yeah, this is agent shit right here. And they're hooking him up, probably giving, giving him a taste of the good life after he comes from some crummy shit to get him to commit fully and say, I want to be down. Let's see. <laughs> he was scouting for the Mississippi Initiative. <laughs> Damn sure some coon shit. Let's see. I said this is North Dallas. Yeah, another fancy looking place. Well, semi fancy. Come on, man. Where's the actual shit? Okay, here we go. See, that ain't bad. That's nice, but that's a lot of moving. I mean, you think about how often you would have to keep moving from big states to big states. You know what I mean? Boris Lemieux says, I want to make a correction about your live on JFK. I stated Michelle Miller's dad, who was a physician, was on the scene at the JFK assassination. Her dad was at the scene when the RFK was, was killed. Okay. All right. That's cool. The story behind keyboard musician talked about and the picture of the man in the newspaper article did not look like Tariq Nashi whatsoever. Yeah, that's what I was saying, too. But if you throw in that there might be some plastic surgery, because you look at the Alex Jones situation. That's possible. See, 
and seeing all these different addresses, I mean, you think even people who dodge rent, rent, do they move like this, this often to different places? And are they able to keep on getting different places? Doesn't make any sense. See, now he's back to a crummy place now. Okay, it looks all right on the, on the inside. Looks crummy on the outside. These are a lot of different places. I mean, you, you realize what this means, right? They don't have the dates here, either because they lost track or because it's been obfuscated. But this is a whole lot of moving. You know it's before 1998. It's a whole lot of moving. That means that how could you get used to a job? with all this moving back and forth, Texas, California, all this kind of shit. So now he's back to a shabby place like this. Sounds like the time where he may have been using aliases. I'm just looking at this because it popped on. Oh, Dairy Queen. <laughs> yeah, those are Therese's addresses. Got a hell of a mix of uh, places. I'll give him credit. His current place is the best one. <laughs> this one is in El Paso, Texas. I mean, Texas and California, these aren't small states. So to keep moving back and forth all over the place. You know what I mean? Okay. I don't know, maybe that shit was torn down. That's what I'm guessing, torn down. See, now he's back in California again, back and forth to California. What's up with that? Okay, I just want to make sure I didn't skip over that Mississippi one. That's the one I'm really interested in. Let's see. Some weird locations for this guy. Unless he's running con games, he's either a coon agent, well, he has to be, or running con games with all these different uh, movements. Selling drugs. I mean, he said, claims he may have been selling drugs. Maybe that's what he's doing. Well, we're going to get into his criminal record in a minute. So, <laughs> yeah, that's a fair place. You see, in tight shit like that, I don't like these sliding doors, man. It doesn't take much to just. Break that shit up. <laughs> they look nice, but I'm big on security. I'm not down with that kind of shit. Unless it's on a balcony. But even then, you know, a determined criminal <laughs> could do what they got to do. I moved maybe, maybe eight times, including engineering college and law school. Summer temporary moves. Shit, eight times. This man has moved 22 times. That's just the ones that's on the record. Plano, Texas. You know, he always uh, fails to mention Texas in his history. It's always Alabama, Detroit. Matter of fact, <laughs> I'm glad I just thought about that because I don't see Detroit on the list. Unless that was where he was uh, doing some off the book criminal activity. All right, this is Plano, Texas. This is why I said Texas I can get with because Texas has some nice looking areas that I can get with. That's cool, I can get with this.
Yeah, see, this ain't bad. I can get with this. What if that fireplace is real or electric? What's going on, Texas Cowboy? Yeah, see, that ain't bad. I can get with that. A lot of people wouldn't mind having that as their main and only home. But still, I got to put some bars over the windows. That's just me. Because <laughs> uh, we got burglarized when I was a little kid, man. That shit stayed in my head to this day. <laughs> Traumatized. Let's see. Now the Al Paso, this is too many moves, man. If we had the years, that'd be even better, but these are too many moves. And you know, if people keep looking at you moving and they look at your record, they're going to be like, what, what's going on here? Because there's no way in hell he could have a actual job moving to these different places. But somehow he had to get this uh, this place. He had to get it somehow. Off the books, maybe he was selling drugs, or he's getting his or the these are safe houses because the CIA. I know people <laughs> are gonna be like, nah, but uh, trust me, the CIA, FBI, they keep safe houses all over the place, and then they just put people in there, make up fake credentials for them. Damn, this shit looks horrible on the inside. God damn. Yeah, I don't like this one. <laughs> so that's El, pa El Paso. Now we're talking about Dallas. Let's see. I mean, these are Coon agent training locations. The only one I I, I would have definitely, if I would have seen New York, my God. <laughs> Let's see. Okay, that ain't looking bad from what I can see. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> hell yeah, I'll take that. I don't know if it was looking like that when he had it. But is that a business now or just how somebody has that shit hooked up? I like that partition of the desk. If that's the house, only their house. If that's only their house, that's cool. I like that. El Paso is a 12 hour drive. Oh, I don't like this right here. <laughs> All right, that ain't bad though, overall. So it's a housing complex. I don't know if it's a condo. Yeah, I don't like sharing washing dryers. That shit's a pain in the ass. But <laughs> oh, no, I ain't moving to Texas, but I did go there. I liked it, you know. That's how I evaluate places. I say, I say to myself, would I love to move there? Would I be excited about moving there? Would I, would I feel at home? And I have to say, in Texas, I, I would. My father's from Longview, Texas. Let's see. Now, this is the Mississippi address. <laughs> Guess the property's gone. Yeah, 118 Market Street. Oh, no, that's the wrong one. Now, let's see if this comes up here. Okay, we can't get anything. Okay, I guess if you unlock it, I guess you got to pay. Okay, Jefferson Davis is, is Alzana Snoop or Spook. I don't know if the Spook is meant to be racist. The Snoop, I'm just giving you behind the con, that's all. I'm sure this Jefferson Davis, this, this kind of uh, coincides with a lot of these aliases that Tariq Nasheed uh, <laughs> used. <laughs> so let's see. Here's Royal Street. I guess we'll go here with it. Yikes. 
Damn, what do you think, Mississippi? God damn, this is what you think about. <laughs> oh, man. Again, why do they have these raised uh, houses in the South, man? I, I just don't understand that. Is it flooding? Is it snakes? Because when I went to, what is it? Okay, you can block them. When I went to uh, the southern part of North Carolina, they had a lot of houses on these raised platforms. And then when you walk on the floor, they creak. And I said, oh, now I see why they where they get this shit from in, in some of those movies. Creaky floors and, and abandoned homes and shit. <laughs> I'm like, I never noticed that shit before. This shit would be scary to me. Now right, let's see what's next. A P.O. box. Uh-oh. In Texas. Back and forth out of Texas and California. But no Detroit, no Michigan on the scene. Oh, this is a post office box, so there ain't really nothing to see here. <laughs> Let's see what the shit was. Or maybe this is it. Let's see. P.O. Box 309. Uh, nope, that's not it. No need to get deep into that, but you know he was up to something. Or maybe he was in between addresses. So he's from Alabama. I don't know why they do not have... Okay, this is another P.O. Box in Texas. He has a lot of history in Texas, but that's not the history he recites to people. Hmm. A real estate place. 962498. 962498. Okay, so his first P.O. box, a uh, real estate in Texas. Okay, so with, from this, we were able to piece together. Tariq Nasheed's missing history. So far, we've learned that he called himself Tariq Omari Nasheed. And he was a real estate agent in Texas. And he still has a valid license. And the addresses and the email addresses match up. So... It must be him. His first out of Alabama address that's on the record is El Paso, Texas. And that comes back to a real estate agency. So apparently his thugging, he was thugging houses, not thugging uh, with crips. Thugging with houses. This is Tariq Nashi, people. I'm sure a lot of people knew his history was phony, but here's the evidence right now. You see, and these names that come up, they let you, uh, see, damn, man, why they have to have her age missing? See, some of that crucial shit we need is missing. <laughs> damn, it's a good report, but God damn. I wanted her fucking age, <laughs> but I'm sure... She's so candid, I'm sure if you asked, she'll tell. Uh, so Alexis Nashi. So that is apparently the name that she goes by now. Same address. So uh, I'm going by that. So it's Tariq's name and alias. He has a whole lot of aliases with Nasheed and female names as well. So he's been all over the place. But I'm going to let you watch the rerun on that so you can see the names at the beginning because I don't want to repeat it because this might be long, this report. Neighbors. Tina. Damn, that's crazy, man. They got your fucking neighbors on his fucking report. <laughs> that's fucking crazy. Tina Julie Dolan. Now, as we see 
with the Knicks owner, Dolan. Never know, they could be related. Uh, that's white. <laughs> Darlene Adrande. That must be Hispanic or some type. Jin Tai Sheng. You know that's Chinese or Taiwanese if people want to get specific. Jelani Christopher. Now that could be a black person. Pavel Kasavets. Obviously, some type of Eastern European. Alba Batana. Sounds like an Eastern European. Alcides Alfaro. Could be Portuguese. Could be Brazilian. Hey, you got to analyze the facts. You know what I mean? Jacqueline. Oh, his associate. Let me get to. Let me just check out. His address is 1775. Let's see what the closest one. I guess this will be the closest one. Let's see how the neighbor is living. Let's see if that's the neighbor we saw in the video. <laughs> Let's see what's going on here. Ah, oh, boy, now that one comes up. Let's see. Don't tell me they got this hidden. Come on. Damn, no street view for <laughs> his home or his neighbor's home, huh? Casavets is Turkish, okay. I guess if it was Casavetes, it would have been uh Greek, right? Let's see. Pretty odd. See that this is Shows you something, no street view, but again, you don't really need the street view if you're trying to stage an assault because everything I showed before, I ain't trying to be funny, but I'm just saying every, everything I showed before, you could put all the information together and, and map out the whole shit. Combine that with his videos, you got the whole shit. All right, let's see if these people show this, this neighbor. Okay, here's a... The satellite view. I forgot what the hell they call that shit. So you see a better. So this is the house in question, his neighbor. So this looks like. Yeah, this is this looks like Tariq Nasheed's actual house right here. So you can tell I'm good at maps. <laughs> Sky view. Okay, yeah. I forgot what they call that shit. Because I started using Street View for uh, instead now. <laughs> So here's that Ronald Reagan uh, freeway. Okay. I guess they won't let you uh, zoom in and zoom out. It's the Ronald Reagan freeway. I wonder if, uh, well, I guess if these people are trying to sell homes, you can't really tell them not to uh, put a picture of it there. It's the only picture they're showing. Maybe they requested that shit. If I was his neighbors, I'd be concerned. White supremacists might be coming, you know? Let's see. Associates, Jacqueline Quintanilla. Quintanilla. And I, I just want to check the address because this will tell you or give you an idea if we're talking about a rich business associate or a hood associate. <laughs> Let's see. Must be a business. Could be drug dealing too, though. Small home. It ain't a bad home. It's not too bad. But it goes to show he likes his, he's down with Latinos. But then again, it says associate. And they have her different living spots too. And I'm sure FBI, CIA, CIA they got a whole lot more detail in this public report. So she could have been somebody he was he was uh doing his thing with. You know? That's one of her previous addresses that looks semi-hood for California. 
California, that shit could be tricky sometimes, you know? Wait a second. Wait a second. Wait a second. <laughs> 470, 437, 15, Nicole, Nicole Street, Lancaster, California. Let's see. 437, 15. Okay, I was, I was about to say, let's see, Lancaster, California, 344. I was about to say, that looks similar to uh, one of the spots before. I was thinking, okay, maybe that may have been his living girlfriend. <laughs> Minnie A. Crispo of North Carolina. Her address, Maryland, North Carolina. 52, they're around his age, so... May have been another female he was dealing with. If that if that's the case, we already know that that sounds Italian. But many Italians don't usually use that name. Many uh, usually Puerto Ricans, some type of Hispanic uses the the, the name many. Hey man, you got to put it together like a detective. You know what I mean? <laughs> so sounds like another jump off he had. That's what it sounds like to me. Uh, then you got Elysius Gonzalez. And this is the same guy who goes on his tirade about Hispanics. And keep in mind, he calls them white Hispanics. He calls them white. But look how many Hispanic associates this hypocrite has. See, people? This is behind the con. That's what this is. What real estate agent anywhere doesn't have a picture? I know many, and they trade on their looks to attract the clients, at least in New Jersey, Pennsylvania, Delaware. Oh, yeah, that's why a lot of those females get what they get. So this is, which one is this again? This is Helicius Gonzalez uh, home. I don't know if that's a male or female name. It sounds the the AS because I did take Spanish when I was in college. <laughs> so the AS that's feminine. That's a feminine. That's a feminine uh, situation. Because it would have been Helicio if it had been male. So that's one of his jump offs or business partners. He could have been staying with this lady. I guess he was putting his macking skills uh, to work. He, no, and he, Elias is a yeah man name, yeah, but this one is spelled differently. And uh, the thing is, though, Elias, that's not uh, Spanish in origin, though. Now, Santos Diomedes Gonzalez. These two may have been related. This guy's 76 years old. I'm not even going to check on that. So that could be business. They, they say associate. Could be drug dealers that he was associating with. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not trying to say. <laughs> That's the truth. It could be one of his jump offs uh, father. 76 years old. Let's see. 4376. Could be. Oscar Armando Herrera. Palmdale, California. Isn't that supposed to be a ritzy spot, Palmdale? Let's see. Palmdale, California. That ain't too bad. Shit almost looks like fall. Did they have a uh, fucking foliage and fall in California? I didn't know they had that. And they have some wide ass streets in California. Shit. <laughs> I know in Texas too. That ain't bad though. So he's so far you see his associates though. Where the where are the Negroes? Marcelia Moran. Kevin Morgan. That could be a Negro. 
let's just see how the Negro is living, his associate Negro. Poor George, Paul George. Yeah, that's where I heard of Palmdale from poor George, Paul George. Palmdale. Okay. The supposed black friend. Looks like that's a nice area. So the weird part is he was associating himself with people, even though it doesn't tell us the years that they were associated, but it could be now. But if it's when he was in his uh, apartments, they had homes, he didn't. Maybe he soaked up game from them. He's probably not the guy who's giving out the game. They were. <laughs> no age on him, Samantha Paralis, 33. For a guy who cussed out that Puerto Rican, he sure hangs around with a lot of Mexican types. And see, that's why he didn't know what he was talking about concerning that Puerto Rican and Hispanics, because I don't know why the same. Oh, you know what? Let me see. Okay, I was wondering why the same house keeps coming up. So Kevin Morgan and Paralis, they lived together. I don't know what kind of situation that was, but. He has a whole lot of uh, Hispanics. That's why he's, he's used to the Mexicans. He's not used to other Hispanics, you know. There's another one. That's that same address, because I remember these kids playing. Let's see. That's the same address, 4730. Oh, so it's right, on, right next to the other one. Forty-seven thirty, forty-seven fifteen, Quintanilla, and Jose. Okay, so they must have been married. So maybe that. Well, it still could have been his jump off though. <laughs> and they both had the same initials, JQ. Look at all these associates. Where the where the foundational Black Americans at? <laughs> Dora Herlinda Vasquez, another Palmdale, 62 years old, wide range of ages. Eduardo Vasquez, Palmdale again. Lucida Vasquez, these are his buddies or jump offs or business people. Let's see if I can get this name right. Yesicia Robles. Did I get that right? <laughs> I think I got that right. And I know I'm not going to get this right. Oh, maybe I will. Dionysia Vasquez. Dionysio Vasquez. Dionysia. Dionysia. God damn, what kind of name is that? that Sound like some Greek mixed with urban... Uh, Slang type shit. <laughs> Professional. His shill companies. We all remember uh, what makes him an associate. I guess he either had business dealings, had his name at their address. Uh, maybe they got some phone records. Maybe he did actual business under one of these. Situations right here. I don't know, but this is why if you are down with people who might be down with with the wrong shit, this is why you got to stay away from them. Some fake sounding names, yeah. But the main thing is they're all non foundational Black Americans. Shit, I didn't even hear any Black names or even any white people. <laughs> so for that. On its own, this guy is full of shit. Again, people, if you're joining us, this is Tariq Nasheed, beyond, behind the con. This is what this man is really all about, but a lot of shit is still hidden. Melanoid Nation Foundation. We remember that shill company. 
King Flex. That's his primary. More us. Remember that shit? President. <laughs> That's what you could do. You just make up a company, call yourself president. You don't want see he did something smart though. You don't want to call yourself the owner though. Because then people say, oh, we know what that is. But you call yourself the president, it sounds like somebody appointed you because you have skills. Melanoid Nation again. Rain Forever Music Group, Inc. <laughs> you know, I got I to check this out. Rain Forever Music Group, Inc. Let's see what this is all about. FMG, you know, almost looks like Umar Johnson's type of shit. Wonder if that's Umar, uh, I mean, uh, Tariq's or somebody else. How are you going to be a music group with no website? <laughs> oh, wait, here we go. I don't see Tariq Nasheed. Mission is to inspire and empower musical entrepreneurs with the tools needed to deliver their creative arts to the consumers worldwide. I don't know if that makes sense to me, but started in 2008. Let's see. See, when they scratch all this shit, they should know on any report if all the other shit is hidden. They should know about this type of shit. Though. They should know when the shit was started and when it ended. That should be on here. They say it was founded by a husband and wife team, team Harold and Judea Chisholm. And what was this title again? It doesn't say. See, when you want to get deeper and deeper, <laughs> Money laundering 101. Yep, something's up. Doesn't say, man. That's where the loose ends, the ends start uh, disappearing. Google Inc. Okay, I guess we can figure that that's his uh, YouTube channel. At Annabelle's Bakery. Bakeries? Now, that can't be... If it's like that, unless the, the people who put this shit together made a mistake, he may have done that shit on purpose. Unless that's the actual name of the actual place. Let's find that out. See, normally, this shit's supposed to tell you where the shit was at. All that kind of shit. Avenel's Bakery. Okay, well, it does say that. <laughs> so you may have had a job here. That's what it sounds like. Where is this place at? Oh, that's Australia. That ain't the place. <laughs> Knowing him, he probably went there. Okay, this is in El Paso. That sounds like it, even though that's spelled differently, Annabelle's Bakery. Yeah, that sounds like what this is was meant to say. You know what, man? I'm going to be honest with you. A mistake like that, I don't know. That sounds like some shit that may have uh, been intentionally misspelled. How the fuck are you going to mistake that? Because if they're getting it from certain sources, that shit should be spelled right. I can guarantee you almost everybody's shit is, everybody else's shit is going to be spelled right or close enough to it. I guess this company, this man got a whole bunch of companies. Just himself, Tweet uh, Nashi, Vice President of Marketing. Religious organizations. You see how he didn't call himself <laughs> the president, the owner. 
remember, people say he's an ordained minister. He dipped and dabbed into every damn thing. Various religious organizations, but they don't give out a name. See, if they gave out proper names and other shit, people can go directly and check it out. But I mean, if you dig deep enough, you can find shit. Except for this, though, because this various religious organizations. DCR litigation services, controller, legal services. <laughs> he never mentioned that. I thought this man was supposed to be thugging. In tune with the streets. Down with the crypts. <laughs> Legal services? My, my, my. Again, this is Tariq Nasheed behind the con. <clears throat> Accounting and bookkeeping. Accountant, accounting manager. How? Nah, that has to be fake. <laughs> that has to be fake. How, how the hell are you going to be an accountant unless it's some shill company? This is the, supposedly the name of the company, accounting and book, bookkeeping connection. Yeah, it must be some ghetto uh, tax uh, type of shit. But even then, you got to have some type of uh, certification. Medical Protection Society. <laughs> Network engineer. Nah, these 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 jobs are too varied. To be real, too varied. No way, in hell, you can go from a network engineer to an accountant to a controller, <laughs> and then to his own shit. Baker in a bakery. It doesn't say what the. Uh, this is bullshit. Gold Co. Precious metals, financial controller, financial services. Now, CD 16 and 17, they go together. Gold Co. Precious metals, that sounds like some pawn shop. Uh, what do they call them? Hack, uh, hot jewelry store. One of those kind of places. Financial controller. But then, even for a black man to get something like that in one of those places, I wonder how that worked out. Here's this DCR litigation services again. Medical Protection Society. Sergeant. What, the, what, kind, of, what kind of shit is this? <laughs> yeah, something ain't right, man. These sound like some bullshit jobs. Bunch of bullshit. Now, you see all these jobs. Let's check out his education. <laughs> Let's see if he has the type of education that will allow him to get any of these jobs. Oh. None on file. And you know what that means, right? See, this is where my JFK research comes in handy. Like I was telling people about Lee Harvey Oswald, the fake one, and his mother moving around from place to place because they were agents. See, when his school is not there, not listed, he should have at least a high school, elementary school or something. That should be there. If it's there, that means people can just get in touch with the school and find out what his real name is. You don't even have to ask the school, what's this guy's name, his real name? All you have to do is call the school I'm looking for my cousin, Tariq Nasheed, asked me to call uh, and find out if I can get his transcript. Uh, script. Yeah, he attended the school in 1975. Tariq who? No, we don't have anybody by that name. Are you sure? He said, this is the school. And he had me call because he's a very busy man. Once they don't find that shit out, you got him. But now the hard part is 
trying to find out who the fuck he was. <laughs> but I'll give up some other clues on how you could do that if you really had the time to do it. But I'm not going to tell because that'll give him some ideas on how to avoid being detected. So I'm not going to do that. Usernames. Here we go. Monet Pierce. See, Verla, this is what you missed. Monet Pierce, Ahmad Nasheed. <laughs> What's up with that? Social media. God damn, they got all his shit up here. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. See, there's no doubt this is the man. Let's see. Uh-oh. Hey, man, if it, that doesn't look like him. No videos could be, could have been something else. When was this shit established? 2007, yeah, this is some shit to uh, throw people off. No videos and shit. Matter of fact, now, now for that, I got to check these other ones out now. Uh huh. Wonder if this is the actual. I shouldn't even. Well, this is Twitter. It's public. Wonder if this is the real guy. Uh huh. Or maybe we're dealing with some identity theft. Hmm. Now, this is weird. Uh-oh. He's a real estate agent. Dallas, uh, Fort Worth. <laughs> hey, if I'm wrong on, on what we're seeing, I stand corrected. I'm going by what's on the report. But well, we see a lot of shit that is Tariq Nasheed, the guy that we know about. See, if you dig deeper, I don't mind digging deeper because I got to be right. As, uh, at least as right as possible. Uh-oh, okay. So there might be a conflict, uh, a merger going on here with these two guys. And this could be the Tariq Omari Nashi. This could be this guy. Okay, and this is the real estate agent. So if this is the guy, then all the real estate shit, uh, I guess we can actually scratch that off. Okay, I guess we could scratch this off. This is this must be the guy right here. Okay. I'll say that this is the guy, unless it's some fake stuff, but I I mean I'm gonna go with the, that this is the guy. That's what I'm going with right now. All right, so that's another Tariq Nasheed. And that coincides with the real estate man, so I'm going to roll with that. I didn't even plan on clicking on that shit either, but. All right, so. All right, so we got. And this can't happen. I'll go deeper, okay. This could happen sometimes, though. You can get a, a mixture of shit, but usually when they got all those aliases used. Something's up. Private video. I can't even sign in because they. Oh, you know what? I think that's the one that somebody sent me. And then I tried to sign in and it was private. And it stayed private. I'm going to go deeper into that other Tariq Nasheed in a minute. That's that again. Google Plus. Clout.com. Never heard of this. That sounds like something the real Tariq Nashi would go on. LinkedIn, uh oh. Uh oh, here's that name, Monet Pierce. 
Let's see what this uh, leads into. Financial controller, Southern California Marshall School of Business. I got to join the connect. Oh, D here's that DCR litigation. <laughs> uh huh. Accounting manager, bookkeeping, and connection. Ain't that funny how the jobs kind of add up, line up with the. Uh... But again, we don't see Mr. Nashi. Let's see. I ain't about to sign in. People could do this offline and. and and see what you come up with. Monet Pierce on LinkedIn. So far, it looks like my man is getting his tracks covered. If, if this conflict is intentional or by accident, I don't know. Uh, that's her again. Because usually when shit starts conflicting and merging together like this, some shit is just kind of weird. Google Plus is not there. Okay, here's that Ahmed, Ahmad Rashid, Ahmed Rashid, not she. Let's see what this says. <laughs> well, we know that's not him. But this is listed as an alias, network engineer. You see? See that title? Al Azhar University, Cairo, Egypt. Network engineer. See, now he has the credentials for that. Uh huh. So something's up. Either. Because he used these different aliases, shit got merged or something. Or the government helped him fabricate fabricate this shit. Something's up. But usually, like when I look at my credit report, there's some shit on there I don't like. Some shit I forgot about. Some shit that wasn't on there, but I never saw anything that was on there that wasn't really dealing with me. I know this is not really a credit report, but they pull it from all angles, though. So something's up. <laughs> this motherfucker really from Africa. This motherfucker ain't even from America. <laughs> oh, they have photos? Damn. Oh, I, I wish the person would have sent me photos if they had some. And there were three photos found. Oh, man, you should have sent that to me. <laughs> oh, man. That would have been critical. I hope that the photos weren't left all, off on purpose, though. But obviously, we know that this is the man we're talking about, because you see right here, Tariq Nasheed, Alexis Nasheed. His alias was Ahmad Nasheed. And for people who are just joining us, let's go back to see Alexis. Wait, hold up. Let's see one of his aliases, Ahmad Nasheed. The Monet Pierce came up. I wonder how that fits in and is connected to his alias because she, Monet Pierce, clearly had the job qualifications for this DCR litigation as a controller. So, and Ahmad uh, Nasheed had the qualifications for the network engineer. So how does that shit get merged together with clearly different people and a female as an alias that he used? Uh-oh. Tripp says, I've seen convoluted reports like this. This is not normal. Yeah, this is usually some agent shit to confuse, lose, and make you say, fuck it. <laughs> but Unlike a Lee Harvey Oswald, because I checked his, his files and other people's files like that, that shit was tighter because obviously it was more serious. Find the tax ID number 
In his IG comment reply, Tariq mentioned that he has Portuguese in him. But that's his home, possible own automobiles. Yep, Escalade. We saw that in the video. Shit's only worth 18 G's now. Damn, they got his VIN number and every goddamn thing. Tariq Nasheed. And they say it's a partial match. 2014 Honda Odyssey. Folks, who I can beat. I could have sworn he had a uh, navigator. Let's see what happens when you put this VIN number in somewhere. <sighs> Boy, let's see. California DMV. It might just show uh, taxes and shit, but hopefully we see who's who the shit is registered to if they let us do that. Uh, you know what? Let me uh, get slick. Let me uh, do it like this. Uh, you need the license plate number. Damn. If it weren't for that license plate number, we can almost <laughs> almost fake it. <laughs> Damn. Oh, but you know what? We find something else. A last oh, you can do it like this. Let's see. Last five digits of the make sure I got that right. How come I said, ah, oh, boy. <laughs> All right, so let me see. So California may do things differently. Let's see. Sometimes what do they call that tax office? What do they call that shit? The is it the comptroller? I think so. Let's see. I'm looking for the yeah, I'm looking for the tax office. God damn, man, what the hell? I think uh, we saw something um, on the Texas appraisal. <laughs> I think they I saw something. He had his name, but it was under Tariq Nashi when somebody else. Man, what the fuck? <sighs> Tax collector. Let's see. Real property auction, missing known heirs, collections, pay your collection bill. <laughs> Let's see if they have what we need without too much uh, funny business. Usually they don't give a damn about this is going cool. Usually they don't really care about letting people's names and shit for taxes and shit out in public, so. Ah, 
account number. He got lucky. Still need an account number. See, other places, some places, they don't let you don't really need the account number. Well, no, no, you really do. All right, well, we can't get in. He got lucky. He got lucky. <laughs> I was trying to find the uh, look up his tax bill. See, because this name right here, this Tariq Nashi, unless somebody heard it wrong. <laughs> <laughs> and putting it into the system, it sounds like an intentional uh, deception. Keyboard musicians' info is deliberately off. An ex-con and a paid agent to sign the confu confused. Let's see. Possible own aircraft zero watercraft zero criminal and traffic records. Criminal record Tariq Ala Nashi. LA case number blah blah blah. We're about to look into that in a second. Fan eyes house west dismissed and not prosecuted a vehicle violation. Let's see what this adds up to. So I don't like when those fake uh, shits come up. I like the real deal. Let's see. Look up cases. Here we go. Traffic. I'm guessing this is going to be the ticket number, or it's probably the court docket number. You can get an idea what this guy is all about. Let's see. Uh, he was guilty. I'm sure it must be the Van Nuys police, I guess. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. There's no way to fucking tell, right? Because hey, it could be any place, right? Damn. Fuck, they got to make it difficult for. I guess so people like me won't do this, right? <laughs> the L.E. A by number. Let's see if that has any clue on here. Maybe it's 107. Let's, let's look into that. Nope. 4107. Nope. I'm going to just say it's Van Nuys, whatever. Let's see, California, they got those California Highway Patrol people everywhere. Let, let me put that in first, since that's general. Oh, uh, and date of birth. Ah, uh, fuck. Case number. Damn. Let me try again. Enter your ticket number. Let's let's try that. Oh, same shit. All right, fuck it. He got saved again. <laughs>
County. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Van Nuys, this is in LA County, right? It has to be, right? I guess. I don't know too many people aren't from California are here or not, but Mahoney, Honey County. I never heard of that one. Guilty, no contest, plea to original charge, close. Tampering with records. Boardman Area Court, forgery. <laughs> Let's see. Guilty, no contest, huh? Let's look this shit up. This shit looks pretty interesting. That's the statute case number. It's wild ass. Oh, this is in Ohio. This is not even in California. Another place he didn't mention. I wonder what he forged in Ohio. Uh, thanks. San Fernando. But is it in LA County or? Let's see what we have in Ohio. Uh oh, this might be even better. Now, this shit is not in this. Uh, on this website, we know something's up. We know something's up. All right, so Tariq Allah Nashi. Oh, you know what? This may not even be the official uh, shit. Then again, maybe. Oh, Los Angeles County. Okay, thanks. This might be one of those. It says Ohio State Public Records. You never know. This might be some. Usually it's a .gov, not a .org. So watch them say I got to pay. I don't know why they have these kind of websites and they allow them to have these kind. What was he doing in Ohio? No public records found. Damn. Pretty strange. Let's see, court rules, case search, attorney inquiry. So that must mean you gotta have oh, that's near Youngstown, okay. Let's see what this is. I, don't know, I guess this falls under here. Let's see. Clerk of courts, commissioner, coroner. Treasurer. Damn, it's 11 o'clock. God damn. <laughs> The fuck? The 
Let me just put it in here. Uh, I guess that was it. All right, let me see. Probate, Campbell, Municipal. Oh, man, let me see where the fuck this town is at. What county is in? <laughs> oh, that's the name of the county. Oh. <laughs> Youngstown, I guess that would be the place it would be at. Let's see what we have here. All right, now we looks like we might be somewhere. Company name. Oh, case number. That's even better. Let's have this come up. Let's see what's up. <laughs> ah, shit. You, now, now you know something. This is this is agent shit now. Now you know. This shit is disappeared from the goddamn court. Now, this is an interesting, and this is 2005. He pled guilty, even if this is a different Tariq Nasheed. It should still come up, but since it didn't come up, I know it's 2005, but goddamn, shouldn't they still have this shit for forgery? All right, well, we'll give them the benefit of the, of the doubt. Now, here's another one in Ohio. Hair black, eyes brown, male, date of birth, 1969. That coincides with his uh, age of being 50 years old. A waiver of preliminary hearing, status closed, tampering with records. So let's see what we have here. Nothing again. Hey, that has to be him. Then he has another one, 2004. Forgery. I wonder what he was doing. Looking at the places he may have been at. Ohio again. And we know his middle name is Allah Nashi. Now, there could be other people with the same full name, but. But that date, birth date, again, coincides with his age. Weight, 250 pounds. Coincides with his weight. <laughs> now, the only thing, if they didn't fuck with the uh, with this shit, the only thing that I can make an excuse for him for is that the shit is over 15 years old. I don't know how long they keep the shit, but you would think online they would keep the shit indefinitely. And then we got his criminal record where we can't verify or see more of the information. But my man's been, he hasn't been thugging, that's for sure. So he spent a lot of time in Ohio. Can't find it. Maybe when I'm not on this, I might look a little deeper, but. So bankruptcies, none. I find that hard to believe with all his moving. Now he could pay to get it all, get it expunged. Okay. Judgments and liens. I find that shocking that there are none. Licenses. This section is locked. 
upgrade this report to be this section. Damn, man. The person who sent me, man, God damn, pay more next time. <laughs> oh, man, that's what we needed right there. That's what we needed. The license sections and the pictures. That's what we really needed. So that's why I made sure I let it be known that this is public information. And you can see I didn't try to play it off and try to say it's all him because we did get led down a rabbit hole where we can't find concrete shit that's verified by any municipality. Now, somebody can get a hold of his uh, license plate number. <laughs> there will be somewhere. The state pen might have those <laughs> records. So with that, that's a done deal on that one. Let's see what somebody says. That new subscriber. So here, I'm, I'm about to close this up now. The online. Yeah, but the problem is he didn't go there, though. That's the problem. So this is Peanut's mother, her father. Darker skinned guys, they love this kind, man. They don't give a damn as long as it's the opposite of them. So this website, they had this guy exposed for years. If people put the picture up here. See, videos get taken down, all types of shit. So with that, let's see. Here's his Mac lessons, Mac into white women. What kind of Mac is that? Here shit is on Conan O'Brien. Let me play this uh, part because what Conan O'Brien said was funny. All right, everybody, we're back. We both danced insanely during the commercial break. That was pretty incredible and just stopped in the nick of time. My next guest is a dating expert, the author of The Art of Mackin right here and The Mac Within, the holy book of game. Please welcome Tariq Kingflex Nasheed. Yeah. This guy coming out like he's some goddamn big star and shit. <laughs> and you can see how funny the shit was to them. Especially when somebody's talking about the Mac within. <laughs> That's always a funny ass title. The Mac Within. This dude on Conan, he's a plant, bro. You don't get on TV. Yep. Gotta be. Because you don't go from what he went through. This is a fake-ass persona. You think about it. This man has never, ever spoke about anything related to Islam. <laughs> if you can go deeper, he also in the craft. Probably so. I mean, the art of macking, the mac within. I mean, how would you get on TV writing some crazy ass books like that? You saw the audience reactions and Conan's Brian's, uh, Conan O'Brien is like, he knows this is some stupid shit. The mac within. <laughs> crazy. Now, this is his little stunt that he pulled. Let me run that back. Police officers creep toward the home of Tariq Nasheed. He was sound asleep when police first tried to make contact by telephone. I said, this is police. You need to come outside. What are you wearing? So I hung up again. I'm like, that sounds weird. A fourth call sent Nasheed to his front door. I looked out the front door and there's people with guns pointed at me. He called the police back and was advised to go outside with his ID. They were told that there was bombs in the house and bomb. I had my wife kidnapped and tied up, and it was just a whole thing they made up. 
And I get the police kind of suspected that it could have been a swatting thing. Swatting is when someone makes a false report to police, prompting an emergency response. A lot of stuff I want to talk about tonight. Nasheed is a popular figure on YouTube and has produced a series of documentaries about blacks in America. And anytime you talk about racial injustice, that's going to make you a target. Going back to Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, Dr. King. He believes white supremacists are behind the swatting, the same ones that troll him online and have sent police on false reports to his public speaking events. This, though, is the first time he's been targeted at home and involved his wife and child. Nasheed remained cool but questions why he was handcuffed when police already suspected this was a bogus call. They were actually good guys, and I take my hat off to them. They were very professional. But what if they weren't, though? You know, that's a dangerous situation to put somebody in, especially a person, a black American, in this day and age where you can be killed with impunity. Well, he also points to an incident in Kansas earlier this year. That's when a man here in Los Angeles called swatting in Kansas, and then the man there was killed by police. Meantime, what is the penalty for swatting? It's a minor. See, my man, he wasn't concerned at all. He seemed to be happy about the publicity. <laughs> uh, of course, he had to wear his mink slide shirt. He just happened to have that on. I remember a keyboard musician talked about it uh, as well. I mean, come on, what's the odds of that? Just happened to have that shirt on. Or did the police say, just surround it, come out the house? He had nothing on. Then he's like, yo, let me get this pink, mink slide shirt. It'll be good promotion. How do you know the press was going to be there? Why would the press be there? You know how many raids cops do all over a city? Come on. Bullshit. But he, you can see he enjoyed the publicity and he wanted to compare himself. You see, he was a Mac, uh, Mac Lessons guy. That was his first persona. Rapper, another persona. Uh, so-called singer, another persona, comedian, another persona, black power man, another persona. He has many personas. He's a fucking actor and a joke. So, oh yeah, let's, let's play this back. <laughs> this is when the young, uh, well, not the young, the slight female, she came to see him. And uh, he ran. Let's see that. Tariq, why are you hiding from me, Tariq? Why are you hiding from me? You talk about me. Where are you going, Tariq? Where are you going, sweetie? Why are you running like a bitch? Why are you running like a bitch ass nigga? What happened, Tariq? You ruined my life. You ruined my life, Tariq Machine. You ruined my life, Tariq Machine. Why are you running like a bitch? Why are you running like a bitch? Do a video about that, nigga. Do a video about that, pussy ass nigga. Do a video about that. You can't answer the woman? Can't answer. You can't answer the can't woman? Answer. Bitch ass nigga, Tariq Nasheed. That's a Go coward. Go do that. Go do that. Come on, keep following me. Oh, this nigga gonna be right here. You might have to just put it in your pocket. So this nigga's hiding, as we can see. He had the police escort me. He ruined my life. He called me an agent. The police were following me. I had to sleep in my car for six fucking months. I almost fucking died. He put everybody out of my business out there. Called me a stripper. Called me a provocateur. Called me old. He knew nothing about me. Nothing. He's supposed to be a black king. He's supposed to be somebody that's supposed to be a leader in our community. He is a bitch ass nigga. This one. Uh, so that's one of his incidents. Uh, yeah, as you can see, uh, Bit Connect, you can see he, uh, all his movements. See the Art of Gold Digging show. C list celebrity or an E list celebrity. That's all he was about. But again, you see the places he was at. You know, you can understand him wanting to get away from that, but see, this was put up at least 2009, so I don't know when the hell this came out, but you can see in his various uh, places, all this shit was a facade. All this macking, rich guy stuff, it's all an act. 
And of course, his sister with the white Hispanic. You know about that. I was going to go over the him dealing with the California, I mean, the, the Puerto Rican, but I didn't realize it was so damn late. <laughs> but let me play a little bit when he messed with the, the white guy who supposedly randomly came on his live, which, of course, uh, that was staged just to make it look like he's handling white people. But listen and look how look at his face and see how he respects the man compared to what he does to black people. Talking about some of the things that needed to be done, and we had people talk about certain things from opposing angles, just to see both sides of the argument. But people took away so much great information from that because we had qualified people to speak on certain things. Yeah. So that's very important. Now, who is Thomas? Y'all keep mentioning somebody named Thomas. I can almost guarantee that's one of the Bussy Brothers. Where is this Thomas person? Where is this Thomas person? I don't see this. Like Thomas Shoe. Okay, this is clearly one of the Bussy Brothers, guys. Come on, hold on. This is one of the Bussy Brothers, man. He's clearly, y'all should know his trolling. You can see now, his man. face that. Uh, Get on here, man. He's already bullshit. Get your ass on here, Thomas. Get on on here, man. Yeah, you know, he, he says stupid shit. Okay, who is this motherfucker? You, you, this is a new pussy brother. Now, who are you, guy? What's going on with I you? ain't no pussy. I ain't no fucking butthole pussy. Ain't none of that shit. I'm just a white dude from D.C. Grew up around black people my whole life. Right. I got more in common with black people than I do white people. All my friends growing up was black. I moved to the Midwest when I was around 20. I've been all over the country, right? And I know the history of how slavery happened, how people were affected, how our whole continent was colonized. You know, I've done my research. Yeah, you can go watch that, but that's a bunch of bullshit, though. He, he just showed this guy respect, kiss his ass. That's how he handles white supremacy. But again, uh, that's what it's all about. When you marry who you claim to hate. And I would go into the Puerto Rican. I was going to analyze that Puerto Rican uh, debate, but God damn it. <laughs> it's just, I didn't realize it got this late. So, oh, you know what? One more thing I see that I forgot about. I'll let this play right here. This was their house after it was furnished. Pina, she's cute. I give it to her. It's a cute little thing, <laughs> you know? See, white people would have a housekeeper to do all that shit, making her get uh See, my man's losing his hair, though. That's why he uh Oh, I think this is where I uh, called him out on his uh, called him out on his house here. Warehouse full of. When did you order? What's up, she raves? Much respect to you, Emilio. See the niggas always they think I'm gone. Thank you very much, Kimberly. Christian, that's fabulous calling it. Like, don't knock out teeth out, fabulous. Good morning, Wayne. What's up, new brother? You can say filthy house. Look at your ass. Nigga, you live in the same apartment they film good times in. Are you talking about my shit? <laughs> It might be filthy. I got a bunch of kids. Nigga. Fuck out of here. Your shit is filthy, and it's just you and your moms stay there. And neither one of you nasty niggas clean up. 
your old mom got dirty dish bottles all over the house. You dig, and you got your KY jelly laying around, nigga. So we twins, motherfucker. I got kids shit around the floor, and you got empty dildo boxes scattered around your damn bedroom, nigga. That nigga be ordering dildos off Amazon as collectibles. You know how niggas be having Hennessy and liquor bottles on the refrigerator? That nigga has collectible dildos on the fridge like that. And be telling his guest about it. I had that in my ass when I went to Cancun. That one right there, I I had in my ass. See, he's arrogant. Uh, He admitted that his house is dirty. (laughs) But you see where he came from, so that gives you an idea of why he's arrogant. Besides the fact that he's a confident coon because he's backed by the white man. But you see the difference is when black people talk to Mr. Nasheed, he is uh, very disrespectful. But when that white man came on, he showed him much respect because the man is a coon agent. There's no doubt about that. Uh, Even as Tripp said, he was in the military. This guy's history is purposely convoluted, compromised, and confused. It's designed to lead you to nowhere. And the somewhere is we need to get to the bottom line of what this guy's real name is. That's the real thing. Once we find that out, then we can find the point of his getting turned out. So with that being said, my voice is almost done, <laughs> but I'm glad people tuned in uh, and watch him try to pull it down. <laughs> uh so what we're going to do, I'm going to get something to eat tonight. Even though it's pretty, what is it, 11.30? God damn, I got to get something to eat. So he's popped up. See, does, he's attacking, standing up. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why they don't tell about his background, his white family member, none of that shit. All right, good night. And Verla, you forgot to do something the last time, so get on that. <laughs> so anyway, uh... With that being said, thank everybody, Trip, Verla, Vanessa, everybody, and everybody who's watching it. We used to call that CIA transporter for it always had it's an edge because that means you got a rat on board. So you know about that shit. You know about that. So Tariq Nashi, this is behind the con. You're a coon. It'll continue. As we saw, the man has bills to pay, and they cost quite a bit. So he has to keep the scams going. And he's a coon agent backed by the white man. With that, I'm out.